from Trestle Field on the campus of Baldwin Wallace University. It is the 2016 lid lifter as the Yellow Jackets of Baldwin Wallace University take on the Yellow Jackets of Defiance College. Hi again, everybody. I'm Adam Mendoza. Along with me tonight is Matt Floor Jancic here from Trestle Field at Baldwin Wallace University. And, and Matt, when we get ready for this game, it's the lid lifter for both of these teams. It's a Thursday night, very uncommon. Well, while in college football, it has become more common. But for these two schools, it's very uncommon to start the season on a Thursday night. It is, but Baldwin Wallace has done uh, has tried to get out uh, to a quicker start than uh, some of their counterparts in the OAC. They've tried the Thursday night games on occasion. They had a two-game series with the College of Worcester where they played a Thursday night series, and they seem to like it. You know, the good thing is everybody's on campus. It's Labor Day weekend, so you kind of get a jump on that, and you get everybody as many students as you can into the ballpark to watch the game and give these you know student athletes a, a nice crowd to support them and to start the season in a good way and we're, we're seeing people still streaming in the crowd it is very good so far tonight and we're looking for more uh here at uh, trestle field and it should be a good first te uh, first test for this baldwin wallace team well you look at baldwin wallace when they come in from last year uh seven and three seven and two in the oac second place a big tie for second place in the OEC a very tough tough conference meanwhile for Casey Goff who's in his first year uh, this team went two and eight last year two and six in conference play yeah they did uh, it's uh, his first season as you said so he's looking to get off to a better start than what the defiance yellow jackets did last year just two and eight two and six in the heartland collegiate athletic conference very difficult conference to play more uh, the western ohio you know eastern indiana teams a lot of physical teams a lot of running styles uh that they face and you know they're gonna face a tough test here tonight with this baldwin wallace team new quarterback but some of the running backs and some of the skill positions are the same you know they have some experience on both lines so this will be a nice test for this defiance team to see just how far they've come under their first year coach and when you're talking about that experience at the quarterback position it's a new quarterback robbie plagans the senior out of rocky river ohio who threw for 472 yards but also can run the football as well and he's going to have a number of receivers coming back this year that made a contribution in that throwing offense last year for the Baldwin Wallace I mean, Yellow Jackets. When you look at the names on this list, it's like I'm taking a depth chart from last year and Plagans is the guy I'm plugging in as the new guy, but everybody around him seems to be experienced, especially from the skill positions. You're talking Tyler Wolf, Tommy Fuller is back, Jordan Leverett's back, Trevor George is going to be an impact player, then he's got Austin Smith and Adam Blake behind him uh, as the tailbacks and Mike Wagner as the – uh, the Y receiver, you know, one of the flankers on this team. And so you're looking at all the guys coming back. And, you know, if play, if you're plaguing, you're stepping into a pretty good situation. You can't ask m for much more. Uh, you're an inexperienced quarterback, but you're surrounded by guys who have done it on a day-to-day -day basis with this team uh, for a couple seasons now. So it's, it's really the best of both worlds. They're getting a guy that has a little bit of experience, but he's getting guys that have a ton, and they're going to help each other. And also in that backfield, Austin Smith, really, he is a, a Mr. All-Everything, can catch the ball out of the backfield, can run the ball very effectively out of that backfield for Coach John Snell. Yeah, everybody needs that that guy that can do a little bit of everything. And, and for the Yellow Jackets, it is Austin Smith. Guy can catch. He can move in space. He can move in a crowd, which is – you know, pretty important, especially if he's catching a screen pass and there's a couple of linebackers around him. He's got the ability to put his foot in the ground and then change direction, use a little bit of speed and shiftiness, but also use some power as well. He has the best of both worlds in terms of the running back style. He can do a little bit of everything, and that's never a bad thing. John Snell is very good at using players that can do multiple things. And one other multiple thing that he can do, he can kick the football. He is the punter on the offense when they have to go and go into that punting situation, which kind of creates a dual threat I was just gonna say that it actually that's a dual uh, uh, benefit for the Yellow Jackets because if you are in a situation where maybe it's a four and fourth and three and you're at your own 42 yard line middle of the third quarter offense is sputtering you're trying to get a spark bam you got your starting running back as your punter so he can you know potentially run a fake not to say as it could it will happen but it could you know it's a nice little asset and a nice little uh, tool in the toolbox if you will for the coaches to use when they need to well the last time Baldwin Wallace and Defiance met back in football that was 1920 yeah I missed that one 
<laughs> so did I. <laughs> yeah, BW won that game 60 to nothing. BW led at the half 41 to nothing in that game. And according to the game notes, every player on that BW roster saw playing time in that game back in 1920. You would hope, if, you <laughs> would, if you're winning 60 to nothing, you would hope that they kind of empty the benches towards the end of the third quarter and get everybody in, get some playing experience. And, uh, you know, fortunately for the Yellow Jackets, they have a – uh, not too much of a history, but a good history against Defiance, and they're looking to get off to a good start. They were picked fourth in the OAC preseason poll. Maybe felt a little bit disrespected as they were last year when they picked were picked to finish fifth and then ended up in a three-way tie for second place. I, I think this Yellow Jackets team, much like that is, uh, one last year, is out to prove some people wrong, and they want to show that you know, darn it, you know, forget about Mount Union and John Carroll being the class of this conference. We belong in that discussion, too, right along with Ohio Northern. And they're going to be out to prove some things. And, you know, a hungry bunch of Yellow Jackets is never a bad thing. No, that is absolutely correct. That's where I was going to agree with you there. You know what? You Okay, so you do get disrespected in the polls, but that gives that chip on the shoulder and that extra incentive, especially when you get into OAC play in two weeks. This is the only non-conference game between, you know, for Baldwin Wallace and any team in the OAC over the next two weeks because you've got to play nine grueling games in the Ohio Athletic Conference. And a lot of that, you, you talked about the teams that you got to go through, Ohio Northern. John Carroll and Mount Union in that upper half of the echelon of the OAC. Yeah, it's a, it's a loaded conference. It's been that way for a very long time now since Mount Union started to go on their run of national championships. And even before, it's been a loaded conference. And we'll see what the Yellow Jackets can do building momentum tonight going into OAC play in two weeks. Well, the kickoff of the 2016 season is underway. The Yellow Jackets getting it, and they are going right to left on your screen. They'll bring it out to the 29-yard line to start off. Robbie Plagans is your quarterback. You'll have the tight end, Brett Sapancic, the receivers, Trevor George, Tyler Wolf, Mike Wagner, and in the backfield, Austin Smith up front for the Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets. And we just can't say Yellow Jackets because both teams are nicknamed the Yellow Jackets. A little bit different. Uh, I, I don't recall too many times where I've called a BW game where the mascots were the same, or the nicknames, I should say. <laughs> so I'm going to try my best to say Defiance and, and Baldwin Wallace you know, as much as humanly possible to uh, to aid in you uh, calling the game <laughs> and also our listeners to keep them on track, too. We'll get the offensive line coming up after this play. Just a second left in the play clock. They got to get it off, and I think we're going to have the first penalty of game. It'll be a delay of game as the Yellow Jackets got onto the field really late to get this offense set up. Up front, Kurtz, Gillums, Sorosky, Rice, and Jacobs are up front for BW. Now on the defensive side for Defiance, Matt DeVore, Greg Ward Jr., Dan Delaro, and Austin Parrish up front. The linebackers, Neely, Gilmore, and Barkley. And in the defensive backfield for Defiance, Kenny Jones, Monkel Moncrief, Jacob Bickle, and Jerome Davis. So after the penalty, after uh, really the, not a good way for this Yellow Jacket team of BW to start the first play of the year, getting a delay of game penalty. Yeah, there are worse ways to start it off, but not mu not much. Uh, going backwards five yards is not exactly what John Snell had in the playbook, but, uh, you know, it's maybe some jitters uh, from the coaching staff as well as the players, and we'll see if they can shake it loose here with their first scrimmage play of the 2016 season. So the ball will be spotted back at the 24-yard line. It'll be a first down and 15 for BW. They are clad in their home white uniforms, trimmed in brown and gold with the gold helmets and the BW on the side of the helmet. Meanwhile, the Defiance College Yellow Jackets dressed in purple and gold. And as you said in, when we were talking during pregame, they, they look like the North Royalton High School uniforms. They do very much. Actually, when I walked in here, I was like, wait a second. I thought this was a college game tonight. Somebody flipped the script on me and was playing a trick. But no, it's definitely Defiance's colors. And Plagans will hand the ball off and a pickup of six yards on the play to Austin Smith, the six foot, 180 pound junior who happens to have resided at uh, North Royalton High School. <laughs> and he picks up a couple of yards on the play and it'll bring up a second down and eight after a pickup of seven on the play. Plagans wanting to get that ball snapped. Now they're going to look over to the sideline. When you look and talking to Coach John Snell, he wants to try to establish the run this evening. 
Yeah, he does. I mean, that's been really his bread and butter since he took over the program 15 years ago. He was blessed to inherit some very good running backs and some running quarterbacks over the years and to recruit them as well. And he has always done a good job to find backs that can be their bell cow. And on that pass play, he hits Mike Wagoner right out the gate, and they'll pick up the first down. Wagoner, a six foot two, 175-pound senior out of Stowe Monroe Falls, a former Bulldog. Last year, 26 receptions for 401 yards and four touchdowns. And right there, they pick up a quick first down, 1350 remaining in this first quarter. The opening drive of the 2016 campaign for the Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets as Plagans will go out of the shotgun with a two by two set. They try the read option. Austin Smith just hitting the hole very quickly over the 45, close to the 48 yard line. And they're running the ball very well. When you look up front, Sarosky, Gillums and Rice, they're gonna have to make some holes for Rice to, uh, for Austin Smith to go through. They absolutely do need to continue doing that, but they've done a good job to already be doing that. Uh, if you look at Austin Smith, his first two carries, you know, the first one went for eight, the next one went for seven. So 15 yards on two attempts, not a bad way to start the season. Brings up a second down and three for BW. Plagans in a pistol formation with Smith behind him. Play action fake. Looks to the sideline. Has him on a crossing route. That's Wagner again down to the 30, down to the 25. And inside the 25, they'll mark him down at the 24. And Plagans did a very nice job looking off one receiver, and then he saw Wagner open for that pass and a first down. That was a great route by Wagner. He was open so far that there was nobody really behind him, and the defensive back had to come from behind and track him down. So it d tells you what kind of route that was and how the quarterback was able to use his vision to look off the defensive backs. Well, on that play, they give it to Smith, but we got a flag down coming in on the tackle for the Defiance Yellow Jackets is Matt DeVore. It's going to be a false start on the BW Yellow Jackets. And that's their second penalty on this opening drive of the 2016 campaign. Yes, it is. So they've already gone negative 10 yards on this drive. Uh, when you factor in the penalties, they're doing a good job to move the football, but uh, John Snell is not going to be happy about those early miscues, especially because they're all basically procedure-based. You're not in the huddle in time. You break it late uh, on the delay of game, and then on this one, you're not on the right count, and you jump off. Uh, those are those are self-inflicted wounds that later on in the year could pay huge, uh, be huge mistakes for this team. First down and 15 once again. The second time that the Yellow Jackets of BW are in a first and 15 situation as Plagans in a partially sun-drenched field towards the midfield area. Has the football on a good snap. Smith bounces off and comes to the near side trying to get a block, and he is going to get dropped for a loss of about four on the play. And coming in to make the stop for defiance is Markel Moncrief. Yeah, Moncrief did a good job to finish off that play, but credit the the big bulls up front, the D tackles. You're talking Anton Richardson and uh, the end, uh, Andrew Schultz. They really did a good job to uh, really stymie that play from the start and make him try to bounce it outside for yardage. Brings up a second down and 18. They're going to go empty backfield with two receivers to the near side, three to the far right as Plagans once again will be primarily out of that shotgun formation. Looks on a three-step drop. Tries to get the pass off to Brett Sapancic, overthrows and a little bit too much of a lead for him, and that is going to bring up a third down and long, the first third and long situation for BW tonight. Yeah, that play really didn't look like it was going to have much on it anyway. It was a shorter out route uh, toward the sideline, and Plagans led the, the tight end a little bit too far on that, but I don't know that he was going to get any yards after the catch anyway because there were a host of Yellow Jacket defenders surrounding the ball. Third down last year for the Yellow Jackets of BW, 47% on third down conversions. Now Plagans is going to run the football, but he is going to get taken down on a very good play by Keandre Gilmer, the middle linebacker for Defiance, blowing that play up. And really, once BW got over the 50-yard line, since that point, they've gone backwards. Yeah, self-inflicted wound on the first play, a five-yard procedure penalty for a false start and then you get a negative run and a sack on third down. Not a good end to this series for the Yellow Jackets. They have to do a good job now of pinning Defiance back deep in their own territory. Austin Smith is your punter for tonight. Quinnell Rutledge is back to receive. He's standing at his uh, six yard line. 
wobbly kick, fair catch will be made, and it will be done at about the 12 to 13 yard line. So for Defiance, they will have the football to start it off here in this first quarter of play. 10.46 remaining in quarter number one, the opening quarter here. BW on their first drive moved the ball effectively, but as Matt, you said, uh, they shot themselves in a the foot a couple of times. Yeah, they did. A couple of negative plays following a penalty. Just not a good way to end that first series. And for the Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets, I think the aim is to get off the field quickly here, make the Fiance go three and out, and punt the ball from deep in their own territory and try to build off of some momentum. Logan Scott will hand the ball off to his running back and maybe a gain of two on the play for Defiance, clad in their purple jerseys as they give that uh, to their second back through. And looking to throw quickly on second down. That one was a quick hitter right off the line, a scrimmage. Quinnell Rutledge drops the football. Yeah, that's a good play, uh, a good bounce for BW, if you will, because that still gives Defiance a third and long situation. And, and now you're trying to look to apply some pressure if it's a passing down for Defiance, but if it's not, you know, you're looking to close up every running gap that you can with those defensive linemen and linebackers. Big play right here for BW. Lamar Dixon in that backfield as Logan Scott will hand it off to him and he just gets blown up at the line of scrimmage leading that charge is Anton Richardson for BW. Yeah and Cole Horan did a nice job as well the senior out of Gibbs, Gibsonia Pennsylvania did a good job to help finish off the tackle and I was mistaken on the previous possession I read the wrong names for Defiance's defensive tackles and I do apologize to those young men uh, was looking at the wrong depth chart but getting back to that play really the interior defensive line did a good job to not bite on the play fake and actually uh, stick with the ball carrier they followed the running back and made sure that they kept a beat on him the whole time so now they'll have their punter back out and that is Jared White gets off an end over end kick it'll bounce at the 50 picked up at the 41 of BW and that's Austin Smith trying to break away from one spins from another not much going forward. Progress will get him to the 41-yard line. Yeah, a lot of swarming going on on both sides of the ball. The tacklers are doing a very, very good job to uh, get after the ball carriers, and they're living up to their nickname so far. There's been a lot of swarming from these Yellow Jacket defenses. So it'll be the second possession of the night for BW. 9.26 remaining. They'll have the football at their own 41-yard line, and in that first drive, for Baldwin Wallace. They net it 45 40. yards. Yeah, and not a bad start. The end was was not what you'd want, but you know, when your quarterback goes 2 for 3 for 38 yards and you have a, a start a starting running back that gets 11 yards on 3 carries, it's a pretty good start. Plagans on the throw to the sideline. He'll hit Wagner once again for another catch and it'll be spotted inside Defiance territory at the 49 yard line and it'll be a gain of nine on that pickup by Plagans. And the playbook now becomes open at second and one. You can try and attempt deep down the field if you want or you can just get the first down but the good thing is if you miss the attempt down the field and you don't throw an interception you still got a third and one with Austin Smith as your running back and that's not a bad option. Plagans three of four so far on the night after that play. Pistol formation drops back, looking down long, down the middle, he's gonna way overthrow and it's gonna be intercepted by Defiance's Kenny Jones. He brings it up to 10 on the far sideline to the 20, to the 30, still on his feet, and he brings it out to the 34 yard line. A good 24 yard return on the interception. Plagans just aired it out and his intended receiver just a bit too slow, but then when you look at Kenny Jones, he got on the afterburners and tracked down that pass. Yeah, the attempt, uh, the target was Tommy Fuller, and Fuller uh, was way overshot by Plagans. Uh, nothing really the wide receiver could do at that point, just try and play defensive back, but the defensive back for Defiance did a great job to haul, haul in the pass and then have a very nice return as well. And uh, now the Yellow Jacket defense for Baldwin Wallace is back on the field after a very short respite. Ball will be spotted on Defiance's 35-yard line. Far side hash mark as Logan Scott looks, throws. The pass is caught, and Cody Wilson will come up with the catch at the 40, but we have a flag thrown on the near sideline. 
interested to see what this call is is going against defiance from the early indication so that's a fortunate thing for Baldwin Wallace to have happen and you're gonna have these penalties early on in the game get the jitters out of the way as the penalty goes against defiance and that'll kick them back a, a few yards and they'll be forced in a first down and long situation. We'll call it a first and 15. Yeah, first and 15 from the 30 yard line. And uh, we'll see what Defiance has in their bag of tricks if they try to stick with the, the read option run game or if they try to use the pass more to get some of those yardage back. Now Logan Scott looking to throw, flushed out of the pocket as he's being chased to the near sideline. He fires, the pass is caught on the near sideline and bringing it out to the 39 ball gets loose but it's still going to hang on as Lamar Dixon comes up or make that number one Cody Wilson coming up with a catch yeah credit Wilson for having the presence of mind to uh, rip the football away from a yellow jacket defender made a nice play along the sideline to initially haul in the pass and then to hold on to the football or, or to get the football back rather from a scrum uh, after it was knocked loose by one of the defensive backs for the Jackets. Nine-yard pickup for Logan Scott last year. He threw for 258 yards as he is in the shotgun formation, and they're going to have to call a timeout real quick as the timeout by Defiance. They couldn't get uh, that play in in time, so Coach Casey Goff calls timeout. Well, today's Yellow Jacket football game is being brought to you by Dan Andrews and Olympic Forest Products, a global recycling company. Also brought to you by Domino's Pizza. Call us in Berea at 440-891-0030 or go online at www.dominos.com. Today's BW football game also being brought to you by the Oreo Cafe, a great place for sports, located at 294 North Rocky River Drive, less than two minutes from campus. 7.36 remaining in the first quarter. No score between Baldwin Wallace and Defiance here in the lid lifter of the 2016 campaign. Adam Mendoza along with Matt Florjansa. Glad to have you along here on the Baldwin Wallace's athletic website. And really, it's been a while since you and I have worked together. I think it, we have to go back to maybe some OAC basketball when you were still a student yeah, at Baldwin Wallace. That's about 10 years ago now. Um, <laughs> you know what that means. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting, getting old. old. <laughs> you and me both, man. On second down and six, they hand the ball off, and not much going there for Quinnell Rutledge as uh, he gets it on the run. He will get no yards on the play. 7.20 to go here in quarter number one. A little bit of trickery by Defiance. They faked the initial handoff and then went with a pitch to the crossing back uh, out of the slot to the left of the formation. The Yellow Jacket defense, however, uh, snuffed it out and did a good job to uh, get, limit that play to no gain. One in the backfield, and we're going to have another penalty. Four so far, two for Defiance, and I believe two now for Baldwin Wallace as they tried to get that play off and going, and BW actually oh, crossed get, into yeah. the neutral zone and then the offensive lineman for Defiance actually wisely stood up and pointed at the yellow jacket to say that he, he drew me offside, sir, and uh, got himself a free five yards. So heads up play, and now you get a third and short. And third penalty against Baldwin Wallace in this game. And as you said, Matt, it is third and short for Defiance. They will put Corey Pennant in the backfield. They'll go with a... I formation. You don't hardly see this too much with the quarterback under center. No, not they'll, at all. They'll bring Wilson in motion to the far side. And the ball is muffed at the snap. And really, you shouldn't have that kind of bad exchange when you're under center. No, you absolutely should not. Uh, it just seemed like the quarterback really never had a handle on it. Scott uh, seemed to be doomed from the start. It's almost like the uh, on his way back to hand off the ball, he caught maybe the inside of the center's leg. Uh, on the exchange and that caused the ball to uh, pop loose but heads up play by Scott to jump on the football yeah it's a loss of four yards but it's better to punt it away to BW than give them the ball at your own 40 yard line Austin Smith one of the returners back for BW good snap as the rush comes away Smith is going to give way as that will be taken by Trip Washington. He's got some room at the 35, out to the 40, 41 yard line on a very good return. Now, Coach John Snow has to be happy in one aspect. His offense is getting good starting position. The only thing he's gotta be upset with is 
they're not getting it past the other maybe 30-yard line of Defiance. Right, exactly. That first drive, they did a really good job to get deep into Defiance territory, and then they had three negative plays, a penalty, a, ru a negative rush, and then a sack on third down. And then on their last play, they were driving, had a second and short, and threw an interception deep down the field. So expect to see maybe a little bit more of the running game to try and get this offense jump-started and move deeper into Defiance territory. Plagans three of five for 47 yards, but they give it to the second man through for the Yellow Jackets, and that's Adam Blake out of uh, Marlington High School in Alliance, and he'll pick up a big, big first down, but uh, he is slow to get up holding that left knee. That's never a good sign uh, especially for a Yellow Jacket team that relies so heavily on their depth at the running back position to see a guy go down so early uh, in the ball game. You hope for his sake he's, he's okay and he's able to come back in the game, at least if not tonight, maybe you know in two weeks when they kick off OAC play. But now you're going to have to start seeing some names further on down the depth chart for BW, and you're going to have to test the depth. And the other thing is that's his first carry. Really, you don't want to – see if he gets you know you don't want him to get hurt on that first carry but uh, let's hope uh, one good thing is hopefully that he can get up and walk off on it they'll work on him on the sidelines uh, but not a good thing when he's not putting any weight on that knee no and uh, I credit the trainers for getting out there and trying to help the young man but uh, uh, maybe needed a couple of backup offensive linemen to help pick up the big guy yeah, yeah that is for sure because uh Adam Blake, 5'11", 195, a junior. They'll take a look at him on the sidelines. That'll bring uh, Austin Smith back out onto the field. 546 remaining in quarter number one. No score between Baldwin Wallace and Defiance. Yellow Jackets of BW with the football at the Defiance 45-yard line, almost in the middle of the field. Now they'll send one in motion. They'll go offset eye out of the pistol. It is Smith. Has a big hole. He'll pick up seven to eight yards on the play. They'll mark him down at about the 37-yard line and a very good pickup of about eight yards for Austin Smith. This is exactly what BW needs to keep doing. They need to churn out big plays on first down and kind of open the playbook a little bit, give Plagan some room to work. Now we're going to have offsides as Dan Delaro got in it's going to be encroachment on defiance and that's going to make an, an automatic first down for bw yes it will so now you're looking at a first and 10 from defiance's 37 yard line instead of a second and two from the 42 uh, it definitely it keeps the positive momentum going for bw and that's exactly what john snell wants now you're to that threshold where you've had some problems now it's time to get austin smith rolling a little bit further on down the field Brett Sapancic will be the H-back to the right as they move Austin Smith in motion. But it'll be Plagans carrying the football to the 30. Has a block to the 25 with a partial stiff arm as he gets inside the 24-yard line. And a very good run. Defiance got to the point of attack quickly, but Plagans, using the stiff arm, was able to pick up that extra yardage. And he picks up about seven yards, and it brings up a second down. We'll call it a very long two as they go quick. No huddle offense. Plagans flushed out of the pocket, throws, has a receiver open, and it is intercepted again as it was tipped on a three-on-one coverage by the Defiance Yellow Jacket defense. And coming up with the interception is Markel Moncrief. Once again, Defiance comes up with a big INT to thwart that drive by BW. Yeah, initially you, you like the aggressiveness and going down the field. The ball took a little bit longer, I think, than BW was hoping to get down the field, and that allowed some of the defensive backs to close. Also the fact he was pinned against the back end line, so he really had nowhere to go. And then Defiance just ran the, ran the tip drill, and one of the defensive backs tipped it up to a teammate, and that's first and ten going the other way. Well, the Yellow Jacket defense of Defiance swarmed as they had three players on that receiver. Now it brings up first and ten at the 20-yard line. They're going to hand the ball off to Corey Bennett. Bennett will get uh, maybe a half yard as he sneaks over the 20-yard line, maybe to the 21-yard line as we're down to about four minutes and eight seconds remaining here in quarter number one at Trestle Field on the campus of Baldwin Wallace University. Yeah, some tough sledding there initially for Defiance. They're going to look to try and reestablish the running game as this drive in this game goes on. Scott out of the shotgun formation. 
is going to keep it, throws a little screen as he tries to get that ball to Tyler Gillig, the H-back, but it went behind him. There were two Baldwin Wallace defenders right there to make the play, but Gillig, I think, heard some feet coming in and did not concentrate on that football. Absolutely, he did, and I think his quarterback did as well. Scott, if he waited a half a second longer, had a wide receiver streaking up the field, uh, Nate Roberts, looked like he had a step on a defender, but Scott got rid of the ball to the to the check down and and it resulted in an incompletion third down and nine for defiance as scott looks to throw with a heavy rush goes to the sideline and he overthrows his intended receiver by about 10 yards that was intended for nate roberts nate roberts went streaking down the sideline and came back but logan scott was really throwing a streak pattern down the sideline yeah the quarterback that's just the case of mis uh misunderstanding and miscommunication the wide receiver ran a comeback and the quarterback wanted him to stay on the go route uh, incompletion. Uh, fortunately for Defiance, his BW's two overthrows have resulted in interceptions. Defiance just uh, threw an incompletion, and now they have to punt from deep in their own territory. Jared White is back to punt. He's standing at his five-yard line. Austin Smith is back for BW along with Trip Washington. This time it'll be uh, Smith letting it roll. It'll get a Defiance roll at the 40, down to the 39, and it goes out of bounds just shy of the 38 yard line but they'll mark him down at the 39 327 remaining here in quarter number one as today's yellow jacket football game is being brought to you by the oswald companies and hoffman group for all of your insurance and risk management needs also by the ohio education credit union gain the advantage the ohio Edu education credit union offers convenience trust and value build your future today Adam Mendoza along with Matt Floor Jansen. Glad to have you along as BW with the football. No score in this game so far. 327 remaining in the contest. And the Yellow Jackets with another possession, hoping not to throw that ball away. And that ball is a gold brick. You can't afford to, to waste too many opportunities with it. And then Plagans on the read option will pick up eight yards as he Brings it out to about the 47-yard line. Very good. He put it in the belly of Austin Smith and then tried to look for that defensive coverage. And then he saw a little gap, and he runs it for a very good gain on first down. We'll call it second and one. They'll, call it, they'll give him a gain of nine yards on the play. Three by one set for the Yellow Jackets of BW. 255 and counting here in quarter number one. No score. Smith will be just to the offset left side of Plagans. Puts the ball in the belly right there, and nothing going for him. They're going to say he is back at the line of scrimmage and good defensive coverage up front by Defiance. Yeah, Austin Parrish, the big defensive end, got in there and really wreaked some havoc on the play. Bringing up a quick third down to give it to Austin Smith. He'll get over the 50-yard line. He should have enough for the first down. He needed about a half yard. He got a full yard and a half, and the officials are saying, let's move the chains. It'll be a first down for the Yellow Jackets at the midfield stripe. This defiance defense is really starting to tighten the screws up front. They're not giving those big chunk plays up to Baldwin Wallace on those last couple carries, and we'll see if BW can start to reestablish that in interior running game that was so effective for them early. That is the sixth carry for Austin Smith in this game. Two minutes to go. Smith once again has to fight his way through back to the line of scrimmage and coming in on the tackle was number 11 Andy Schultz the defensive end out of North Royalton High School. So Smith and Schultz old teammates. Yeah and one didn't even have to change colors. <laughs> no that's Absolutely on that one. 138 and counting. The Yellow Jackets will send two receivers to the far side. They'll have an H-back on the near side with a single receiver to this near side of the field. They'll bring one in motion, Leverett. On the jet sweep, looking for a block at the 40. He'll be close to the first down, depending on the spot of the football. Looks like he should have it. Very close if he doesn't, and now they're going to say that he does. I tell you what, when this young man gets the ball in his hands, uh, pretty much like Joshua Cribbs used to be for the Browns on, on punt returns and kickoffs, you always kind of held your breath waiting for something special to happen. Leverett is that player for this BW team. When he gets his hands on the football, you better watch because it's something special is about to happen. First and 10, the ball spotted at the 40-yard line. They'll bring the H-back Sapancic in motion. 
two in the backfield. Austin Smith finding a hole but gets popped at the 35 after a five-yard game. Boy, they are hitting hard down there on that field. Yeah, Delaro was the one who supplied the, uh, the finisher on that play, just came up over top and blasted Smith to the turf. This hitting is really starting to pick up here in this game and this is going to be a very physical game if BW continues to run the football and uh, do it right into the teeth of Defiance's defense. Pistol formation for Plagans as Smith goes to the left of Plagans on his hip. Gets the shotgun snap. Batted at the line of scrimmage on a very good play once again. We've called the name uh, for Defiance. That's number 23, Keandre Gilmer, and he just came in. That linebacker just shot through, got his hands up, and knocked Plagans past. Plagans has found his troubles with this Defiance defense. You know, two interceptions and then that batted pass. It's, it's really been a struggle for him to try and not only see over the defense, but see down the field as well. He needs to be quicker with his passes. He can't put too much air underneath the football. Plagans on a rocky river looking to throw down the sideline. Has a receiver diving for the catch and coming up with it inside the five to the four yard line. On a great pickup was Tyler Wolf, the senior out of Fremont Ross High School last year. 21 receptions for 296 yards. Now that's an example of a perfect pass from Plagans. He put it where only Wolf was going to catch it, and Wolf laid out and made a beautiful reception on the play. What an excellent play uh, by BW from an execution standpoint. The blocking held up. The quarterback did his job, put the ball where only the wide receiver was going to be able to get it, and the wide receiver did what he had to do to get the space. Tonight's Yellow Jacket football game is being brought to you by Medical Mutual of Ohio. Medical Mutual is a health care provider of Baldwin Wallace University. The Cleveland Clinic Sports Health Division, the health care provider for BW Athletics. Parkway Auto Care in Berea, Strongsville Express Tire and Auto Service, and in Montville. We serve the southwestern suburbs of Greater Cleveland. American International, where you re when you require a company with proven performance, rely on American International. The Comfort Inn in Middleburg Heights, where your comfort is just a part of the service we provide our guests. The Courtyard by Marriott and Town Place Suites in Middleburg Heights. Have you stayed at a Marriott today? Integrity Berea, when you are looking for a place to call home, choose Integrity Berea. Visit us today at MyBereaApartment.com. Also, today's game is being brought to you by Valley Ford Truck. When you need a big job done, call Valley Ford Truck. We carry the load for BW. And finally, by Crown Plaza Suites in Middleburg Heights, we are, are where you are looking for a quality place to stay before any Yellow Jacket contest. Please choose Crown Plaza Suites in Middleburg Heights. Adam Mendoza along with Matt Florjancic here from Trestle Field on the campus of Baldwin Wallace University as the 2016 Lidlifter underway. No score in this game between BW and Defiance, but after that big, big pass play, Baldwin Wallace is sitting pretty first and goal to goal inside the five yard line. Yes, they are, and they have a back in Austin Smith that's been doing the job between the tackles so far today. Minus a couple plays. We'll see how they establish him down close to the goal line. Austin Smith trying to break one, two tackles. He'll get it inside the three. They'll mark him down at about the one and a half yard line. And quickly, BW will get to the line of scrimmage. No huddle offense on second down and goal to go at the three yard line. Plagans wanting that snap from center. Now they look over as they looked at the defense. Just underway here in this second quarter. The Yellow Jackets in the red zone, threatening the score. Smith will be to the left of Plagans. He'll get the handoff. Tries to slash his way in. Referee goes to the sideline. They're going to call it third down. They're not going to say he got in. Well, the sideline thought he got in, and the offensive line did, but the only guy whose opinion counts was the line judge, and he said no. He was stopped short of the goal line. Third and goal to go inside the one. Smith will go to the left side. Touchdown. Austin Smith for BW as the Yellow Jackets go on top six to nothing. And boy, when you want to talk about a hard earned six points in this game into the second quarter, for BW, it's been hard earned because Plagans has been plagued by the turnovers and throwing some interceptions early on. Yeah, he has. He threw two, but he came up with a big pass completion that set up that touchdown 
uh, for Austin Smith. And good job by Smith because really Defiance did a did an outstanding job to create some havoc and some pressure up front. And he had to jitterbug his way uh, into the end zone. It was only one yard, but man, it probably seemed like 15 for him because he had to go a long way to get into the end zone. But that's a great way to establish yourself offensively for Baldwin Wallace after some early struggles. Okay, now you can shake it off. You can put some things in the past, those two interceptions, forget about them if you're Plagans. You just made an outstanding play. You went up 7-0 with 14.02 to go here in the second quarter. Now it's time to turn it over to your defense and credit Baldwin Wallace's defense. They've really done a number on this Defiance team. Defiance has had next to no luck moving the football against BW. Well, that drive for BW, 11 plays and 61 yards. Time of possession, 427 with that touchdown and a very good drive for the Yellow Jackets. And they gave it to their go-to guy going inside when it was first and goal to goal, giving it to Austin Smith. Here are two statistics that have helped BW overcome the pair of interceptions from Plagans. Defensively, they have stopped defiance on each one of their third down attempts. And Baldwin Wallace holds 1101 to a 459 edge in time of possession so they are using that running game to chew up the clock so it kind of minimizes the impact of those turnovers so now bw getting ready to send the ball away it'll be deep to the far side inside the one yard line as defiance will try to bring it out to the 10 and the turf monster bringing down the back and on that kick return was Devonte craven those darn yard markers, they always get in the way. It seemed like as soon as he made a cut at the 10, he went to plant, and his legs just went out from underneath him. And it's a shame for him and Defiance offensively because there was a window for him to potentially get to the outside and maybe pick up a few more yards. I'm not saying he would have broken the whole thing, but he definitely left some yards on that kickoff return. And now BW's defense is really in good position to go after Defiance. Lamar Dixon in that backfield. Logan Scott so far. Two of five for nine yards passing. They'll give it to Lo Lamar Dixon. He'll get bottled up at the 15. He'll pick up two on the play. And for Lamar Dixon, that's his third carry of the ball game for five yards so far tonight. Some tough sledding early so far for this, uh, this defiance running attack. They have not been able to crack the code against BW up front. The, the big guys, the the guys in the trenches for BW are really doing a good job to close up those holes as soon as the snap of the football. Well, Defiance so far, net yards rushing will give him two as Logan Scott looks to throw, fires the pass, was looking, could have been intercepted by Kerry uh, Sparrow, and in reality, the receiver did a down and in, the quarterback threw a down and out. Yeah, and, uh, fortunately for Defiance, it didn't result in a turnover because usually when you have that kind of miscommunication where the ball's going to the left and the guy's going to the right, there's a defender always seems to be there, and there was, but he had to make a lunge for the football, and that's a tough, tough play to try and catch on. Logan Scott on third down, fires a pass up the middle. It is caught. It'll be a short for the first down as Quinnell Rutledge comes up with the catch for Defiance and for Rutledge. That is going to be his second reception of the ball game. Their first first down of the ball game, and it's taken to the 13:06 mark here in the second quarter. So we'll see what BW can do defensively to try and respond now that they're going to be out for a little bit more of an extended period of time. Lamar Dixon in that backfield. We're down to 12:50 to go in the first half of action. Three wide receivers with an H back. They'll give it to Dixon once again, and not much for him. He'll eke out maybe a yard to the 25-yard line as that Yellow Jacket defense of BW coming in and leading the charge, Anton Richardson. Well, there's 36 inches in a yard, and there's about 36 bruises on that back after that play. He was hit by pretty much the entire front seven, uh, give or take a guy or two, but that's some tough sledding when you have to take that many shots to just gain one yard. Second down, we'll call it a long nine for Defiance as they'll go two receivers to your right with an H-back now moving to the near side. Scott 
Looks like they're changing up the play at the line of scrimmage, looking over the defense as the linebackers changing up and a little bit of miscommunication. Scott's going to look downfield. Steps up, ball's loose, and it's going to be picked up by Dixon. He's got some open running room on the near sideline. To the 30, to the 35, cuts up field, and he gets out to the 42-yard line. He'll pick up the first down in a bizarre busted play for Defiance because that ball was away. It looked like B.W. was going to pounce on the ball. There was Lamar Dixon, Johnny on the spot, and he picks up the first down. That was the most unique almost 20-yard run I've ever seen. I mean, you're talking about making something out of nothing. Credit the young man for Defiance to have in the presence of mind to not only jump on the ball but turn up field, and he had a whole lot of green in front of him. And on that play, they get it to Nate Roberts, and they hit him in the bad spot. The numbers drops the football on a first down pass as Logan Scott now two of six on the night throwing the football for defiance. For a quarterback that's had some troubles completing the pass, those hurt even more. Those ones where you put it right in a perfect spot and the receiver can't come up with it. Those are heartbreakers, and now you've got to you know, work on a second and long. Second down and 10. They set up the screen to Dixon. Flag is thrown in the backfield. It may come back as he picks up the first down as uh, once again, Lamar Dixon comes up with the pass reception. But uh, let us wait and see. I think it's going to go against Defiance. Yeah, it's, it was thrown in the area of a hold. And it really, uh, it was a hold that didn't need to be committed because the running back had scooted the other way and credit him for uh, for making something out of no nothing. Dixon really did a good job to uh, get open in space, but it was an offensive lineman that got tangled up with a defensive tackle, and uh, Defiance is doing some clapping, so I think this one's staying, and uh, there's some more going to be tacked on, but potentially. If it's against BW, that'll be the fourth penalty of the ball game, and it's going to be. And, uh, wow, what a break. Yeah, what a break. They keep the first down. It was probably a situation where the penalty yardage wasn't, uh, you know, as much as the play uh, turned out to be. So Defiance probably declined that one. On first and 10, they get the pass off to Cody Wilson on the far sideline, just outside the numbers. He'll be about a yard shy as they pick up uh, eight yards, actually, they'll call it. They'll mark it out of bounds at the 41 or the 39. So it'll be a pickup of eight yards on the play for Defiance as they're moving the football in this drive. Nice little inside slant route to, to their back, but the ball is loose, picked up by the Yellow Jackets. And coming up with it is Caray Sparrow as he picks up the loose ball after the pass completion, a fumble. BW comes up with it, and they are sitting pretty, looking to get back up and, and, and try to add another six on the board. This is an opportunity for the Yellow Jackets to really start to separate from Defiance. They were looking not so good on defense, but they come up with a big turnover after what was a big gain for Defiance, and now they have an opportunity with a first and 10 at their own 40-yard line to start separating this game out a little bit, and we'll see what this offense can do. 10.42 remaining in quarter number two. BW with the football with the H back to the left and two wide receivers to the left. Plagans will hand the ball off to Austin Smith. Tries to get uh, maybe another third, uh, three yards on the play, but they're going to mark him down at the 42. It'll bring up second down and eight for BW. Yeah, some tough sledding in there uh, on that play. Really not much Smith could do. And Defiance is outside of one run on that last scoring drive for BW. Defiance has really tightened up with their defensive tackles and defensive ends. They're making it a little bit more difficult for Austin Smith. Total yards for BW, 143 in the game, only nine for Defiance. But BW is just up 7 and nothing here in the second quarter. On second down and eight, two by two wide receiver set for BW. Plagans on a five-step drop, heavy rush, steps out of the pressure, now keeping it himself. He'll lose two yards as he gets taken down at the 40-yard line. Helping out is Keandre Gilman for Defiance. Tell you what, two-yard loss on that play, not bad because there was a whole heap of trouble up front. He was dropped, almost would have been dropped at about the 30 had the initial defender been able to corral him. So credit Plagans with uh, using his uh, fleet-footedness to escape the initial rush and to get as close to the line of scrimmage as possible. Trevor George will check in for BW. They'll also have. They might be using a timeout here. 
Yeah, I think they couldn't get that personnel in in enough time. So with 9.13, timeout is called on the field as BW leads it 7-0 after Austin Smith picks up his first score of the year for the Yellow Jackets. While the Yellow Jackets have outgained Defiance 143-9, they have had their struggles tonight. Yeah, you're talking about committing two turnovers on drives that were in Defiance territory. One of those turnovers being in the end zone along the back line, uh, a pass thrown into triple coverage that was tipped, deflected, and corralled by Defiance. And then another one where it was just a flat-out overthrow of Tommy Fuller on the left side of the field, and the defensive back did a good job to break off coverage and go get the football. And then you're talking about a situation where you've committed – a handful of penalties as well and none of them have really been the big ones or hasn't been a hold or a personal foul but you're still talking about backing yourself up into a first and 15 situation on two occasions and on those two drives you've turned it over and when you look at it bw opened a game with a penalty yep. it was a delay of game penalty so really not the good start that coach john snell really wanted for his team but he knew this defiance team was going to come in and cause some havoc as Plagans looks to throw oh the pass is caught on the near side and a great catch being made once again by Chad Steinwachs as uh, he comes in to make the catch on that sideline and it looked like it could have been picked picked off by defiance i tell you what that defensive back was about a hair away from taking that thing back to the house if he could have corralled it Plagans did a great job to thread the needle in there, and I tell you what, uh, that was one heck of a catch and run by Steinwachs. So now VW in defiance territory at their 27-yard line, movement at the line. Plagans looking down the sideline, has Tyler Wolf in the corner, and it goes incomplete as he just did not have enough real estate on that near sideline. It's one of those situations where you see the flag come out, you figure it's a free play, likely against the defense for encroachment take the shot deep nothing bad can happen on the play and that's exactly what it was it was encroachment on defiance and the worst case scenario bw still gets a free five yards and it's a first and five you're talking from the 22 of your opponent 839 remaining here in the second quarter of play as the lights are on in a beautiful late summer early fall night to start off september in northeast ohio the puffy clouds about as the sun is just about to set. Game time temperature, 75 degrees at kickoff. As Austin Smith gets inside the 10, he'll get it inside about the seven, and he'll be knocked down at the five yard line as he picks up 18 yards on the run and the Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets quickly go to that no huddle offense. And they're going trips to the left of the formation with a, a blocking back to the left. Now it'll be Austin Smith trying to pick his way and find a hole, gets to the five-yard line. They'll get him back to the, maybe give him a gain of one on the play with 8.15 and counting here as the clock rolls. Late flag flew in, uh, not a good situation, likely a dead ball foul uh, for some extracurricular activities. We'll see uh, who is the guilty party on this one but uh, it could cost BW some yardage if it's against them, and if it's against Defiance, you're going to lose about two and a half yards. Waiting for that call as the officials discuss it. Unsportsmanlike conduct on Defiance. That's a big penalty. Yeah, it, and that's you, an automatic first down. It's an automatic first down, so you basically give BW two and a half yards, but more importantly than that, you give them an extra crack inside your own five yard line not a good situation for defiance and you, you start to see the frustration mount that might not be the only penalty they get um for you know some extracurricular activity first and goal to go at the three yard line for bw austin smith hits the hole he falls forward and he still tries to fight for the goal line but he'll be stopped shy just inside the one as the clock under eight minutes to go, they go quickly, no huddle with a receiver to the left and a receiver to the right. Plagans in that shotgun snap, Smith to the left, he'll get the handoff, spins his way and... He got twisted and didn't get, get across the line of scrimmage. They're gonna call it third down and goal. Similar situation when the Yellow Jackets of BW scored the last time. They were in a third and goal to go situation at the one, and they gave it to Smith. Could Plagans run it? The Rocky River native. 
awaits that shotgun snap, looks over to the side. BW will go with three receivers, two to the far left, one to the right. That's Mike Wagoner. Clock down to 7-10. BW up 7-0. Plagans get the snap. They'll give it to Smith. He goes left side. Touchdown, Yellow Jackets of Baldwin Wallace. Good bit of running right there by Smith. To the stick to for this Yellow Jacket team. They're, they dance with the, the girl that brung them, if you will. They went to the, the same play. They went to the same player who had gotten them inside, uh, defiant, deep into their defiance territory with an 18-yard run, and he was able to punctuate the drive with his second rushing touchdown of the game and season. Simonis on the extra point. The kick is low, but it is going to be good. Austin Smith with 15 carries, 51 yards, and he picks up two touchdowns on the night as BW goes up 14 to nothing here. And just like that, the Yellow Jackets put up two quick scores. Yeah, they do, and they really credit that last one to the defense for getting the fumble uh, on what was a nice pass play by Defiance, and then BW had a nice return. Sparrow got the ball out to the 40-yard line, so you're talking 60 yards to pay dirt, just a little bit over uh, half the field. That's not a bad way uh, to start an offensive possession with good return off of a miscue from Defiance. Well, the Yellow Jackets will lead it 14 to nothing as uh, they get ready to kick the ball away. And just like that, you know, you look at those two scores, time of possession on that last play, 338, took eight plays, 60 yards after the Austin Smith touchdown, his second of the night. Not a bad way to start it off. Had an opportunity no. to talk to Austin during OAC Media Day as we uh, had an opportunity to talk to so many of the coaches and players here at, uh, at the – Pro Football Hall of Fame, so it was really nice to, to talk with those guys as Defiance once again coming up, and boy, what a big hit by BW. He got out to the 19-yard line, and he got popped so hard, it bounced him back to the 15, but forward progress got him to the 19-yard line. It wow. looked like he hit a brick wall and then had like it was like an amusement park where a, a big fist came out of the wall and punched him back four yards. I mean, he went flying but credit, credit the ball carrier for holding on to the football because it, when initially I saw that hit, I thought for sure he had to get separated from the ball. Oh, absolutely. So it brings up first and 10 for Defiance at the 19-yard line. Logan Scott looking to throw far side of the field. The pass is caught by Cody Wilson at the 25-yard line. It'll be a pickup of five. Actually, they're going to mark him at the 26, so a pickup of six on the play. And any positive yardage for Defiance is going to be a good thing because just after that play, that gives them in total yards, 70 yards total offense. Truly outgained by BW tonight as they hand the ball off to Lamar Dixon once again. He'll be shy of the first down. He'll go to the 29, and it'll be a pickup of three. Brings up third and a long one for Defiance. No, it won't. They're going to say oh, it's a gonna first give down. Wow. I mean, it was, uh, it was right at the stick. I mean, it doesn't look like it's to the 29-yard line from where the center is holding the ball, but I guess it did enough for the officials to signal a first down and 10. And for defiance, that's exactly what you want to try and keep your defense off the field. Scott looking to get this defiance team on the board as they're down 14 to nothing. Lamar Dixon trying to break one tackle, breaks a second, gets out to the 35 as he picks up uh, about six yards on the play. Defiance getting a number of turnovers against BW, but they have not been able to capitalize early on in the game. Yeah, they haven't been able to punch anything into the end zone and really make BW pay for those miscues. Obviously, you don't like to have those turnovers if you're Baldwin Wallace but you really are, are thanking your defense if you're Robbie Plagans right now because they've bailed you out of two bad spots. BW trying to sneak up on the defensive side to get it to Lamar Dixon. He gets bottled up at the line of scrimmage. Brian Steph is just one of the Yellow Jackets right there to make the play along with Dustin Baker out of uh, Highland and Marengo, the sophomore. Some young guys doing the job up front for BW. John Snell always likes to see those younger guys help uh, come in and help and be, you know, instant contributors because that means uh, you can build up a rapport with those guys and start to develop real talent. 
third down. We'll call it a very long four. Four defiance as Scott looking to throw. Has a receiver, and it is overthrown as that pass was intended for Quinnell Rutledge, his favorite receiver on the night. But good coverage there defensively being made by Andrew Groves. I credit Groves a lot, the strong safety for this VW team, because it was a pass thrown a little bit too high, and you could tell he really, really wanted to go after it and try to get a pick. But he restrained himself and did not commit a pass interference penalty. He just went for the swat on the ball, and, and eventually didn't even need to do that, so credit him you know, on the play. The ball out to the 50, so it looks like there was a penalty against BW as Logan Scott goes in, throws the football, goes in complete. He is now 7 of 14 for 51 yards on the play as the chains were brought to the 50-yard line. This is an opportunity for Defiance right now. This is a really good spot for them to be in offensively. They want to cash in this with seven points. They don't want to settle for a field goal right here. Well, they would love to cross that midfield marker as they get it to Lamar Dixon trying to find a block, trying to get to the outside, and then he is just punished on good pursuit by the BW defender right there on the far side of the field. That was... Uh, Andrew Groves once again he came from the far side of the field and just kept tracking down Dixon and then brought him down when another defender helped out for BW to slow him up a bit yeah that was all that uh, Dover really needed was that initial uh, slow up at the line of scrimmage 413 BW up 14 to nothing defiance losing two yards on the play ball spotted at their 48 yard line they want to cross that midfield strike Scott out of the shotgun snap. Heavy rush, flushed out of the pocket. He's going to run. He's going to be chased. He's going to look for that first down marker, and he does get it at the 39-yard line before being taken out of the play by Jake Carner, the senior out of Salem, Ohio. That was a good bit of running right there by Scott, and I don't know if he really even knew that there was a, another defender in pursuit after that initial rusher. Uh, there was a, a guy coming off the edge that really kind of collapsed the pocket, and he took off down the field. It didn't look like he was going to get very much, but he got 11 yards on the play. Actually, more than 11. I think he got 13 for the first down. Ball spotted, and I think we're going to have possibly encroachment on BW. Yes, it is. And on the encroachment will be on number 27 for BW, and that is uh, Tedderan Fields, the cornerback who thought his receiver, Cody Wilson, moved. He did think that there was a flinch, and there may very well have been, but when you when you go and push somebody uh, quite definitively like that, you're probably going to draw the flag more often than not, regardless of whether you were the first guy to jump. So it brings up first down and five for Defiance, their best movement of the night so far. Scott brusted play, looking to throw, flushed out of the pocket. He would have been better off just throwing the ball into the sidelines. Absolutely. I was thinking the same thing when he crossed that second hash mark. The only thing that came into my mind was just get rid of the football uh, because nothing good is going to happen, and you can see nothing good happen because Scott is limping his way to the sideline, and we're going to have a new quarterback for Defiance as he heads to the training table. He got taken down very awkwardly on that play, and he got all sorts of bent up in ways that you don't want to be uh, at the bottom of the pile. Uh, credit him for being able to jog off under his own power, however gingerly it may have been. And now you're looking at a situation where, you know, your backup, John McKinney, is in at quarterback. So now he gets the pass off to Quinnell Rutledge and nothing going on that play. Boy, sometimes that defense just swarms so fast. Yeah, there's really no holes or seams in his defense uh, when you're passing in front of him. You've got to think at some point to test downfield because that short stuff is not getting you those yards after the catch. John McKinney, the backup quarterback for Defiance, now in here in the second quarter, not due to ineffectiveness, but to the injury to Logan Scott. McKinney, flag thrown. They're going to stop the play. This one will go against Defiance says. Once again, we saw it with BW. They move the ball, they move the ball, then penalties really hurt them. Right now, penalties are hurting Defiance, as in it's an illegal procedure call against the Yellow Jackets of Defiance. Yeah, I mean, you were looking at a third and seven from BW's 37, and 
that's no easy task. And now you're going to be looking at about a third and 13, third and 12 from the 42. And you just made the, the job a little bit more difficult for yourself. 2.02 remaining in the first half. BW up 14 to nothing. Defiance with the football on a third and 13 at the BW 42. McKinney, the quarterback, gets the shotgun snap, steps up, batted at the line of scrimmage. Nice play being made by Anton Richardson, who got his paws up in the air and batted that ball at the line of scrimmage. Tell you what, if Andrew Schultz was a step to his right, he had an interception waiting for him. He did a good job to uh, kind of pressure the guard and center and put a little heat on the quarterback. But after the deflection, he had an outside chance of getting an interception. Anton Richardson, a 230-pound junior at six foot two out of Chicago, Illinois, making a, a havoc there for McKinney and company. Jared White is back to punt the football for Defiance at his 42 high snap, brings it down, tries to go rugby style, kicks it back to the left, and it'll go out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. One of the deepest starting positions for BW on the night as they have a minute 39 to go and a 14-0 lead. Yeah, this is really the, uh, the first time they've been backed up and deep into their own territory, and we'll see what the Yellow Jackets are able to do against this Defiance defense. Uh, if you're Defiance, your mission is to try and get a three and out, and if you have to use those two timeouts, don't expect BW to pass. Expect a healthy dose of Austin Smith, uh, and look out for some other guys that could potentially bust out as playmakers for this Yellow Jacket team. A guy like Jordan Leverett on a sweep uh, is definitely in, in the realm of possibility here for BW. So now BW with the football deep in their own end. Plagans will have two receivers to the left, two to the right. Long count, looking to throw downfield. Has a receiver open, steps out of the box, but he is going to get taken down on a good play being made by Cody Brown. Yeah, the strong safety coming up, playing at the line of scrimmage, shot through, and really did a good job not only to put pressure, but to put a grasp on Plagans and not let him get away. Uh, there's been a couple times where Defiance has had a swipe at Plagans, but they've let him get away. And now BW has to make sure of two things. If you're going to pass, have Plagans get rid of the ball quickly. And if uh, it's a bad snap, fall on it, take the safety, don't give up a touchdown. So after the loss, it's second down and 18 for BW. The handoff goes to Smith up the middle, gets to the 10-yard line. He'll pick up five on the play. So third and a very long uh, conversion attempt for the Yellow Jackets. It'll be about a third and 13. 42 seconds and counting left in this first half. 32 on the play clock. BW is going to be content to use as much time as they can. And truthfully, I'm kind of surprised that Defiance isn't using a timeout right here to at least force BW to have to punt from their own territory, deep in their own territory. Ball spotted at the 13 or make it the 11-yard line and the clock down to 20 seconds. You're right. I'm, I'm surprised they didn't force them to, you know, they stop that clock. Right. The handoff goes to Smith. He'll get back to the 11-yard line, and I think Coach Goff is just going to let the clock wind down, and, and that's going to be it for the first half of action as BW will go into halftime with a 14 to nothing lead here at Trestle Field on the campus of Baldwin Wallace University. Not exactly the start BW wanted initially with those penalties, but they closed with touchdowns on their last two drives of the first half, definitely carrying some momentum into halftime. They have to kick off to start the second half, so the defense that's been doing the job all night against Defiance is going to get their first cracks uh, to start the second half. So it is halftime, and... The Yellow Jackets up 14 to nothing. And when you look at just some of the early indicators on the numbers in total yardage, BW with 193 yards in the first half to just 89 for Defiance. Turnovers, that's been the big key, the big bugaboo for BW 
most of those coming in the first quarter. They were able to bounce back and put up 14 points in the second quarter. Yes, they were, and they did not only uh, did they commit those two turnovers but get off the field after them. They forced one and then turned it into seven points on the other side. So if you're looking at points off turnovers, despite BW being down 2-1 to one in the turnover category, they're up 7 nothing in points off of turnovers. Austin Smith with two touchdowns, both coming from a yard out. And uh, really, he's been the go-to man in that short yardage situation. He absolutely has, and he's been carrying the load for this team offensively. Uh, Plagans has been in and out of some struggles, but they've been able to turn to Austin Smith and say, you know, young fella, go get me that one yard on the goal line, or hey, go get me that 18 in the middle of our, our deep in our own territory. And he's been able to answer the bell, and that's exactly what you need out of a running back. Well, we'll step aside for a little bit. You folks can hear the Baldwin Wallace Marching Band performing here at the half.
And welcome back to Trestle Field on the campus of Alden Wallace University. It is halftime as the as the Yellow Jackets of Baldwin Wallace lead Defiance 14 to nothing. Taking a look at the scoring in this game, Baldwin Wallace with 14 points in the second quarter after a scoreless first quarter. Austin Smith with two touchdowns, both from one yard out on two successive drives for the Yellow Jackets of BW. When you look at third, the third down numbers, BW, 5 of 7 for 71%. Meanwhile, Defiance, just 2 of 7 for 29%. Neither have had to try to make a fourth down play. But when you look at the total yardage, BW with 194 yards in total offense to 89 for Defiance. The Yellow Jackets of BW averaging 5.5 yards a play. And they've only had six more plays than Defiance offensively, so that tells you all you need to know right there is that uh, Baldwin Wallace is doing an outstanding job of being productive. I mean, when you're getting 5.5 yards per play, you're talking about every two plays you're getting a first down. And it, that's that's huge right there when you can continuously move the chains and keep Defiance on the field. BW with 120 yards passing on 6 of 10. Meanwhile, Defiance... 8 of 16, throwing the football for 54 yards. BW has been sacked three times for 14 yards, as Defiance just one sack for six yards. BW has run the football very well, 74 yards on 25 attempts. They're averaging three yards a, a carry. Meanwhile, for Defiance, 35 yards on 13 attempts, 2.7 yards a carry. Yeah, rushing the ball, BW has really done a good job, uh, especially at all ends of the field. I mean, they're really not just saying, hey, go get me three yards here and two yards there. It's like, hey, go get me two yards on the goal line, but also I need you to spring an 18-yarder to move us inside the five. It's really been a mix of everything. There's been the big hit plays. There's been the short yardage plays that result in touchdowns. So really, BW is doing uh, everything they need to uh, – move the ball down the field and in the second quarter they found ways to punch it in the end zone. Robbie Plagans for BW 6 of 10 for 120 yards passing but he has thrown two interceptions in the game. Rushing the football for BW Austin Smith 19 carries 59 yards two touchdowns. Adam Blake one carry for 12 yards. Haven't seen him. He injured his knee on his only play from the line of scrimmage. Still no word on that injury. Hopefully not too serious. And Robbie Plagans, five carries for three yards in the ballgame. Receiving-wise, Mike Wagoner, three catches for 47 yards, his longest 28 yards. Chad Steinwalks, one catch for 33 yards. Tyler Wolf, one catch for 31. And Leverett, one catch for nine yards. Meanwhile, for Defiance, Logan Scott, 7 of 14 for 51. Before he got injured and knocked out of the ballgame, his backup, John McKinney, coming in one of two for three yards. And if you look at who's warming up on the sidelines, McKinney has his helmet on. Logan Scott's helmet is nowhere to be found. And he, he's trying to warm up with McKinney. But I, I think we're going to see more of the backup here in the second half, especially because it looks like the pads for uh, Logan Scott, the wraparound pads, the flak jacket, if you will, to protect the ribs, looks like it's been taken off and is hanging loose from behind him. Rushing the football for Defiance, Lamar Dixon, eight carries, 40 yards. Corey Bennett, one for one yard, and Logan Scott has four carries for six yards in the game. Receptions, Cody Wilson, three catches for 25 yards. Quinnell Rutledge, the leading uh, pass catcher, four of them for 18 yards, and Lamar Dixon, one for 11. Now, two turnovers in the game for BW on the, uh, on the interceptions and uh, taking a look at some of the defensive numbers for BW your leading tackler in the ball game is Sean Nishwitz with four all of them on assists and for defiance Kendry Gilmer with six total tackles in the game three sacks for defiance Brown, Gilmer and Neely with sacks, only one for BW, that's Andy Schultz. Yeah, it, that's a little bit misleading, though, because if you look at the pressure that BW has put on the Defiance quarterbacks all night long, and, you know, even if they're second and 12 and they get to the make it a third and 11, it's really not a, a good play for 
defiance, but it's essentially as close you can get to a sack. So they really have done an outstanding job of creating a pass rush. The stats do not show it, but the fact that they've been able to get defiance off the field five times out of seven on third down tells you all you need to know about just the job that this defense is doing for Baldwin Wallace. Time of possession in the game, 16-18 for BW, 13-42 for Defiance, but really that 13-42 came late in the second quarter because it was almost a two to three to two or three to one margin in that time of possession for BW. If you look at the first quarter, it was more than a two to one advantage. It was four, uh, a little bit, I think it was 11-01 to 459 over the first 15 minutes of play. So when you take that into account, uh, Defiance really did a good job in that second quarter to possess the football. They just don't have anything to show for it on the scoreboard, which is a credit to BW's defense. Well, it is halftime here as both teams going through the warm-ups to get ready for the second half of action as BW leads it 14 to nothing over Defiance. Yeah, it's been a good start for this season so far for the Yellow Jackets of Baldwin Wallace, uh, especially in that second quarter. And they're going to ask their defense to go out here to start the second half and to stop defiance and get the offense back on the field so Robbie Plagans and Austin Smith can lead them down the field and hopefully punch it back into the end zone where uh, Smith has already visited twice today. He's looking for that hat trick. So as both teams get ready, I think when you look, Matt, at the second half of action, I think the big key for Coach John Schnell and this BW offense, you've already got Austin Smith really rolling, running the football. I think it's Plagans who needs to get a little bit more comfortable, you know, a shaky first half, a couple of interceptions. Really, he needs to get a couple of those touch passes going to really get that confidence going. Without question, that's the no, outside of scoring touchdowns, which is the number one goal for every offense every every time they touch the ball. Your number two goal better be to get Robbie Plagans more comfortable because you've already done a very good job of establishing Austin Smith, and now you have to figure out a way for Plagans to stay confident back there. And I think that that pass to Tyler Wolf uh, down the sideline, that deep ball that set up Austin Smith's first touchdown really did a good job to build the confidence for this uh, inexperienced but yet veteran quarterback. He is a senior, doesn't have a whole lot of playing time because he was following Tyler Meglin, who had an outstanding career here for the Yellow Jackets. But Plagan still has a lot of skill, and you want to see him put it on display, and you want to see his his uh, skill positions around him help help him along the way because there is a lot of experience at the wide receiver position, and you hope that if that he's having a bad day, that one of those guys go up to him and say, look, just get back to being the Robbie Plagans that we know. You're a starter for a reason. Go out and do what you have to do. We'll make plays for you. Just trust us. Continue to trust us and have that confidence in us. Well, today's Yellow Jacket football game is being brought to you by Dan Andrews and Olympic Forest Products, a global recycling company. Also by Domino's Pizza. Call us in Berea at 440-891-0030 or go online at dominoes.com. And thank goodness they were here to serve us food because uh, that was dinner for tonight. Uh, yep. Uh, some Domino's Pizza, always good. I, I'm actually a big fan of the, the Domino's Pizza. Hey, man, when uh, you're in a press box and it's the only thing, it tastes even better. You know, it's a good <laughs> pie to start. And then when, uh, when you get it and you, you haven't eaten in a while and it's dinner for you, it's like the best pie in the world. Also, tonight's game is brought to you by another great place to go eat. That's the Oreo Cafe, a great place for sports, located at 294 North Rocky River Drive in less than two minutes from campus. I've uh, been there a number of times for some lunches when I'm in the area. That's a nice little establishment over at the corner time, of Berea. A long-time establishment and a long-time sponsor of BW Athletics. Definitely, you have to tip your hat to the Oreo Cafe, and thank you. Uh, to them for all of their sponsorship of Yellow Jacket Athletics. Also by the Oswald Companies and Hoffman Group for all of your insurance and risk management needs. As we get set for the second half of action on just an absolutely gorgeous September evening in Northeast Ohio, the Yellow Jackets will kick off the football to start the second half of action as they are going to go right to left on your computer screen as the Yellow Jackets dressed in their home white uniforms with the gold helmets. Meanwhile, 
Defiance, also the Yellow Jackets, in purple and gold with the purple helmets. As BW getting ready to kick the ball away. It'll be Riley Jones, the left-footed kicker, teeing it up, approaches, sends a high end over end kick. It'll be taken at the five-yard line by Defiance. And a little break on the action and down to the 20-yard line after the pickup by Quinnell Rutledge and Defiance will have the football first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. And as we talked about during the half, John McKinney will come in as the quarterback after Logan Scott was injured in the first half of action. Yeah, and we'll see what the, the young man has and what he's able to do with his skill positions. There's not much. Uh, check that. Logan Scott is back into the oh, ball game. Apparently he in. buckled up the flak jacket, found his helmet, and is going back in. So that's a good sign for him and their program. Obviously you don't want to lose your starting quarterback on day one. He was able to just shake loose the cobwebs or whatever was affecting him at halftime and is back into the ball game. Logan Scott will hand the ball off to Corey Bennett, tries a cut to the far side of the field at the 20. He'll get to the 21-yard line. He'll pick up a yard on the play, but there was a lot of white jerseys there on the play. Cole Horan, uh, Horan right there for the Yellow Jackets to make the stop. Brings up second and a long nine. Very important for the defense of BW to set the tone in this third quarter of play. Yeah, if you can get Defiance backed up and force a punt here, you can really make some hay offensively by getting them off the field and getting your team in good field position. Sean Nishwich, that linebacker on the left side, was looking like he was going to blitz the quarterback. So you got to watch him as he's approaching the line of scrimmage as they send five. He gets to the outside. The pass by Scott goes incomplete. And good coverage by Trip Washington, the strong safety for BW. Yeah, good job by Washington to come up and meet the ball and the man at the same time, avoided that dreaded pass interference penalty, and swatted the pass away. Jake Carner comes in on that nickel package as it is a third down and eight. Ball spotted at the Defiance 22-yard line. Logan Scott looking to throw, fires the pass. It is caught Rutledge, try or make that number 30, and uh, that is... Devontae Craven, Craven on the offense trying to stretch it out, but he is going to be short by, I'd say, the length of the football. Yeah, it's not much, and Defiance is going on and sending their offense back onto the field. Quick snap under center. First down will be picked up by Defiance as they go to Logan Scott under center, and it is a first down for the Defiance Yellow Jackets. That is a team that knows the value of starting the half with the football and wanting to get themselves back into the ball game. They know they cannot go down three scores and expect to get themselves back into the ball game. They're looking at this like this is their last uh, shot to really uh, keep themselves in contention for this win. BW with 14 unanswered points. They move two in motion to the far side as they go to the H back. Now they bring a receiver in motion to the near side. Logan Scott waiting the shotgun snap, gets the ball off over to Corey Bennett. Nothing going there as he has dropped for two yards on the play. And uh, Charkham Bonaparte coming in to make the stop for BW. Yeah, that play seemed to be doomed from the start. Scott lost his footing, and then the tailback lost his going into the line of scrimmage. And you never want to have anything less than a full head of steam there. And that, there was nothing that he could do to uh, run out of the tackle from Bonaparte. So it brings up second down and 12 for the Defiant Yellow Jackets. Now they had five up on the line. They moved the linebacker off for BW. Scott looks, fires pass, caught. It'll be a three to four yard gain. A modest gain on second and long. They're still facing a third and long here for Defiance. And if you're gonna look to uh, change your fortunes uh, from what you had in the first half, I think third down is where you can make the most hay. Just two of seven at the half, and really those two came late in the first half, so we'll see what BW's defense has in store for them here on this second third down of the drive. Third down and seven for Defiance. They bring up eight in the box. Put a man in motion to the near side. 
Scott looking to throw, heavy rush, fires the pass, has a receiver open. It is caught for a first down on a great catch by Cody Wilson inside the 50-yard line. They'll mark him down to the BW48. That was an incredible effort. It looked like he went over the top of cornerback Howard Dover to make that catch. Dover, there was not much else he could do defensively to stop that play. And then they go right back to the pass, and they get about five yards on first down uh, Wilson is trotting off gingerly for defiance maybe an equipment issue right now as he gets tended to on the sidelines but now it's a second and a five for a defiance second and six excuse me from Baldwin Wallace is 44 and it seems like it's been forever since defiance has even been close to the 50. Second down and six. You're absolutely right. Only maybe two or three times that they've crossed into the territory of BW, and they give the ball to Corey Pennant. He cuts back up the middle to the 40-yard line. He'll be shy of the first down marker, depending on the spot. Could be about uh, just an inch or two away. They're going to bring it and call it a third down and less than a yard in defiance going in with that no huddle offense trying to trying to pick up the tempo a little bit and that's when they keep BW on their heels. This has been the best rhythm that Defiance has had offensively in this entire game and they're looking to keep it rolling right now. Logan Scott looking to throw fires the pass batted up in the air and it goes incomplete. Good defensive coverage by the Yellow Jackets and on the play was Howard Dover out of Akron Firestone a junior. I tell you what, that was a dangerous pass. Scott kind of flicked it out there, and his receiver was in space, but that space closed pretty quick. And on the deflection, there were four Yellow Jackets within five yards of that ball when it initially got tipped. Very lucky to be holding on to possession. Logan Scott, 10 of 18, throwing the football for the Defiance Yellow Jackets. Fourth down and one. Their first fourth down attempt for a first down. Scott fires batted at the line of scrimmage once again and another big play. Andy Schultz out of North Royalton High School coming in to make the big play. That was a huge play after they had converted a fourth down earlier in the drive uh, with the run. They tucked the ball underneath center for that one. On this attempt, they elect to go with the pass and it's batted away by Schultz at the line of scrimmage. Credit him for getting the big mitts up in the path of the football and creating a turnover on downs and BW now has pretty darn good field position. They'll start their first drive of the second half at their own 39 yard line. Well, Casey Goff had the field pretty good that, you know, his team was moving the football, but then with that fourth and one, it just imploded after that big play by Schultz. Kind of surprised that they went away from the run on those last two plays. I would have thought for sure that they would have stuck to their bread and butter. Well, Robbie Plagan, 6 of 10 in the first half, passing the football. We'll have Austin Smith in the backfield with a two-by-one set. They'll hand the ball off to Smith. He bounces off the line, comes to the near side of the field, and will get out to the 42-yard line and pick up about three yards on the play. Yeah, that's making something out of nothing because he really did get tripped up at the line of scrimmage. He did a good job to keep his balance for as long as possible and continued the forward momentum, fell forward, gained an extra two yards because of it. 9.56 remaining in the third quarter of play. BW up 14 to nothing. Adam Mendoza along with Matt Florjancic. Glad to have you along here as BW on the season lid lifter. Their only non-conference opponent of the year. And then in two weeks, it'll be conference play in the Ohio Athletic Conference as the Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets pick fourth in the preseason media and coaches poll. H back to the right. Plagans looking over the defense. Now looks over to the coaching sideline as they look at the defense, and uh, we've got a referee calling for a stop for an official to call the stop on the play, and I don't know if the play clock was moving or not. I'm not sure. Not exactly sure what the stoppage was, but the field judge had uh, something that he saw that wasn't quite right, and we're going to have an adjustment on the clock at moved. least a play clock. They moved it from 40 to 25. So Plagans will be the quarterback. They'll have Sapancic as the H-back to the right. And Austin Smith in the backfield as the tailback. See, the but, problem is right now the play clock's not moving, and the ball's been spotted. So, so there might be an issue with that play clock. 
Plagan's looking over the defense, looks to the sideline for the call. He's going to keep it, looking to throw on a run. Fires, has a receiver open. It is caught by Jordan Leverett. He gets to the 40, inside the 40 to the 39, but we've got a flag thrown back at the 41-yard line in BW's uh, field to play. Yeah, we'll see what the call on the play is. That uh, could be in the area of a, of a roughing the passer, and that's exactly what we're going to have, roughing the passer on defiance. That's a situation where Plagans did a good job to deke the defender. Looked like he could have run for the first down and flipped it at the last second. Took a pop while he did it, and that got BW a free 15 yards. That's a big mistake by Defiance because now you're moving BW from about the 39-yard line down to uh, the 23. And they're almost in the red zone after that big, big penalty, and a costly penalty for Defiance as Plagans and company coming out to the line of scrimmage. They'll have three receivers on the near side. The lone setback is Smith. He'll be flanked to the left of Plagans out of that shotgun snap with one wide out to the far right side. 8.55 to go, BW up 14 to nothing. In motion is Smith to the near side out of the backfield. Plagans looking, firing the pass, is caught on the inside move at the 10 to the nine, and a first down pickup for BW as they pick up 14 uh, yards on the play. It'll be second down. Or no, I was it was oh. Wolf on the reception. Uh, excellent catch by him. Plagans really did a good job to put it right on his hip, though. I mean, that ball was right where he was going to catch it or nobody was going to catch it, and he did a good job to corral it. Low snap picked up by Plagans. He throws into the corner. Not enough there as the ball goes out of bounds, and it goes incomplete. Plagans was trying to hit his receiver deep in the corner, but uh, I think he needed to be playing Canadian rules football because he needed that extra 20 yards for that pass play to be anywhere good. Yeah, you need a little bit more distance on the end zone to be able to uh, get that. But you know what? That's not a bad play if you're Plagans. Put it where only your guy's going to get it or nobody's going to get it. That's the golden rule when you're this close to the end zone. You don't want to make those critical turnovers as he did in the first half where he threw an interception in the end zone. Second and goal to go at the 10-yard line for BW. Three wide outs to the near side. Smith to the left hip of Plagans out of that shotgun snap on a half roll out to the near side. He looks for the corner, has a receiver. It is intercepted. No, they're going to call it incomplete. Could have possibly been a pass interference as Markel Moncrief was there on the cover looking for Brett Sapancic of BW. I know it was an incomplete pass, but that's about as good a result for Baltimore and Wallace as you can expect because there were about five bad things that could have happened right there. And un unfortunately for the Yellow Jackets, uh, it didn't happen as the interception was corralled out of bounds. And uh, you'll live the fight another day. Third down and goal now from the 10. That could have been a third interception by Plagans as the linebackers cheating up a bit for defiance. Very stingy defense. They've only given up 14 points. BW has had control yardage-wise, but they just haven't been able to really get away from defiance as Plagans gives the ball over to Smith, bounces to the outside. He's going to walk in for a 10-yard touchdown, his third of the night. Yeah, Austin Smith is doing the, some work for Baldwin Wallace right there. He is really uh, putting in a yeoman's effort. And uh, that was a, about as simple a run as he's had tonight. He took the ball. Uh, there was nothing up the middle. Seeing that, he took it around the left tackle and was into the end zone untouched for the touchdown. Well, looking at the sidelines here, we see Adam Blake uh, with the knee pretty much braced up and in crutches. His night is over, but one good thing is he's been able to put a little bit of pressure on that left leg. He was injured on his only carry of the football. Yeah, it was uh, early in the game. He went down after a, a nice gain of 12 yards, and uh, he clutched at his knee, and that's never a good sign. And then about five minutes later, you could see he took his pads off and threw them away in frustration. So you kind of had the feeling that his night was over. You hope for him that uh, he's able to get back on the field uh, soon. You know, early indications are not that great, but we will see. Uh, if he's able to play. But the good news for the Yellow Jackets is even with out Blake on the field, Austin Smith has been able to carry the load, and he's been able to punch it into the end zone three times. 21 carries, 73 yards, three touchdowns, averaging three and a half yards a carry. Austin Smith with the three touchdowns for BW as Simonis 
comes in and he makes that extra point. And for the Yellow Jackets on that drive, Baldwin Wallace, six plays, 61 yards, only took up two minutes and three seconds. I believe that's our fastest scoring drive of the night. You know, that was a good job of being efficient with the football and being effective with the play calling. Kick up and away, high end over end kick. It'll be taken by Rutledge at the 15, tries to cut up field, spins his way to the 18 yard line. Ball comes loose, but they're gonna say he was downed inside the, the 19 yard line as the turf and they'll mark them down there. Once again, Defiance, a long way to go, very deep in their own end as they are facing a 21-point deficit here in the third quarter of play with 8.05 remaining. Adam Mendoza along with Matt Florjancic here as BW starting the 2016 campaign. Really, BW's special teams has done a good job tonight in their coverage units, especially on kickoffs. Haven't had to see the punter too much uh, but really doing a good job to put Defiance in long field situations. So it brings up first and 10 for the Yellow Jackets of Defiance as Logan Scott, the quarterback, was injured in the first half but is back in the second half. He's going to look to throw, looking for the screen, and the pass is set up to Corey Bennett at the 20, quickly taken down at about the 23, 24 yard line. Very good defensive read by Brian Stepp, the middle linebacker for BW. Yeah, excellent closing speed on the play too. Way to stick with it and to not let Bennett bust loose for a further yardage down the field. That's always a dangerous play, especially when he had three blockers in front of him, but BW did a good job to get to the football. A pickup of five yards on the play. It brings up second down and five. Scott, 10 of 19 in the ball game for 78 yards. He is out of that shotgun snap. Looks to throw, inside slant. The pass is incomplete as once again he was looking for Quinnell Rutledge. Ball bounced out, should have been intercepted by BW. A golden opportunity goes by the boards for Baldwin Wallace's defense, but that play was really doomed from the start. Scott is not really in sync right now with his, with his receivers. And the rain beginning to fall here in Berea. That is a steady rain that looks like snow in the lights and we don't want to talk about that it is september we know we are ending summer as this is the uh we got 21 weekend. more days left of summer <laughs> this is some the uh autumnal equinox i believe it is it uh, doesn't happen till later in the month so we've got some time but as the meteorologist as you know would say this is really the the twilight of our summer. The twilight <laughs> of our summer once we get to this Labor Day weekend coming up. And uh, we hope that everybody enjoys a, a good, safe Labor Day weekend. And we're getting it kicked off the right way here with some Yellow Jacket football, some Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jacket football, I should say. And that's really the, 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 the best part about the end of summer is it's football season. Here's Logan Scott's pass, goes incomplete. We'll say his intended receiver was Cody Wilson. There was two on the pattern on the far side of the field. Over through one, under through the second. That was about 10 yards deep. Yeah, again, he's not in sync right now with his receivers. He's missed badly on his last two passes. The one should have been intercepted. Uh, it's not a good situation for Defiance right now. They're in a passing situation pretty much every time they touch the ball now, down 21 points. Uh, midway through the third quarter and they're deep in their own territory punting from about the five yard line. Rob Wolfington is back at his 50 yard line for BW to receive the punt. Good snap, heavy rush, kick is away into the sky. Wolfington drops the football, still losing it. Now he picks it up at his 30, trying to turn upfield, looking for a block downfield at the 35, gets depleted at the 40, down to the 50, down the sideline at the 40, still tripped up and finally falls at the 35. And in reality, he had a big run, but he caused a lot of problems because he lost about 15 yards on the run. Yeah, he initially lost the handle on the football when, when he tried to pick it up. Uh, he ended up kicking it about 10 yards backwards, and that really sucked in every defiant special team coverage guy and allowed him, all the, all the gunners had really keyed in on that one area, and he kicked it outside, got a nice block at about the 35-yard line that really sprung him, and he, had he been able to keep his feet, he had another blocker that was going to spring him for a touchdown. John McElfresh 
de-cleated one of the Defiance uh, downfield blockers that really sprung open the run for BW. New quarterback, front toss as they get that off to Dewan Grover. He is down for a touchdown. That is going to be a 33-yard touchdown run on the little scoop pass up front, and BW just blew this game wide open, up 27 to nothing. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's going to go down in the book as a pass from Plagans. You're not going to find a, a more interesting touchdown pass. Just a little shovel of the ball and gone to daylight for the touchdown. Excellent bit of running right there by Glover. He turned the corner, and there was no one that was going to stop him. Now Simone is getting ready for the extra point, and it's a 28-0 lead for BW. And just like that, 6.52 remaining in the third quarter, and the Yellow Jackets blow this one wide open. Quick and as a hiccup. It goes 7-12. The play of the punt starts, and by 7.52, just 20 seconds later, BW is in the end zone for the fourth time. And the Yellow Jackets of BW with a 28 to nothing lead. And uh, Dewan Grover, Glover, a 33-yard pass from... From Plag Plagans was the quarterback on the play. It was a little shovel pass that, uh, again, not much to it, but it went to daylight real quick. And that's a backbreaker for Defiance. Yeah. You know, you give up a long return and it sets you up on a short field. And then one play and sort of a trick play not really necessarily a trick but a gadget play if you will and it ends up being coming a touchdown now you're down four scores now at this point you're starting to play for a little bit of respectability and some confidence going into your your uh, rest of your schedule but give credit to defiance they really hung tough in the first half of action but just two quick scores by bw in the second half really opened things up as uh Devontae Craven gets bottled up at the 24-yard line on the return, and BW's just feeling it right now, and they're taking that advantage over Defiance. Yeah, and now they're going to look to uh, use that momentum defensively to try and create a turnover here. They were close on the last drive. Now if they put some pressure on Scott, make him make a bad decision, they could get some more points and another turnover. Logan Scott in the ball game, throwing the football tonight. He's 11 of 22 for 83 yards. BW with 249 yards in total offense to 135 for Defiance. Corey Bennett to the left hip of Scott. Looking to throw, fires the pass. It is caught. It'll be about a five-yard pickup on the play. Brings up second down and five. No yards after contact for this team. This defense for Baldwin Wallace is really doing a good job to wrap up and drop the ball carrier. Second down and five. Scott looking to throw. BW up big. That pass is caught at the Defiance 42-yard line. And the catch is made by Nate Roberts, the wide receiver. Scott took a big shot on the play after delivering the football as defensive tackle Wesley Spence shot in there and really wreaked some havoc and drove the quarterback down. He was very slow to get up. Ball spotted at the 42. Scott looking to throw and we're going to have pass interference called against BW as the receiver Cody Wilson was tripped up in the defensive backfield and on that play was Jacob Boyd the sophomore out of Kirtland High School. That's a tough pass interference penalty to take because Wilson did have a step on him, but that where the ball ended up uh, versus where the receiver was tripped up at, it would have taken one heck of a 40-yard sprint to get to that football. But nonetheless, it's a first down for Defiance at the Baldwin-Wallace 47-yard line with six minutes to go here in quarter number three and Defiance trying to chip away at a 28-0 BW advantage. Logan Scott uh, struggling a bit, trying to get his offense moving. They're in BW territory, maybe for the third time tonight as he is forced out of the pocket, looking to throw. A little shovel pass on the inside. They get it off to Corey Bennett, fighting his way to the 45-yard line. All that, they probably ran about 20 yards 
uh, laterally, but only picked up two yards on the play. Yeah, that was that play had bad news written all over it, but I credit uh, Scott and Bennett for making positive yardage out of nothing because there was a whole lot of pressure coming from that interior defensive line of Baldwin Wallace as well as an outside linebacker, and Scott did a good job to attract it as long as possible and then skip it down the field. Four dime linemen, four BW with a heavy rush. Scott fires the pass. Is caught or not? We don't have a completion, but we do have a penalty flag, and it looks like it could be pass interference on BW again. If it is, that'll be two on this drive that BW has gotten flagged for, and that is something that's going to stick in the craw of John Snell for the next two weeks. It is secondary, uh, made some blunders in the second half. We're still, I, I guess they're going to call the, the pass completed. Pass interference on BW. First down, so at the spot of the infraction, the ball will be put at the 35-yard line. And the first down as the rain continues to fall here in Berea at a very good clip. Yeah, it definitely is going to make the ball slick, and we'll see if defiance is able to hold on to it when the ball gets into traffic lamar dixon on or make that the quarterback keeper as they run it to the left side and that was a logan scott on the run he'll pick up five yards on the play very good handling of the football trying to give it the decoy to dixon and scott running it to the left never a good sign though when your quarterback goes airborne especially after the rough uh, hits that he's taken tonight. You want him to get out of bounds as quickly as possible and avoid contact at all costs. Second down and five at the BW30. Defiance down 28 to nothing. Scott looking to throw, looking for his receiver. Way overthrows the intended target that time. Uh, four, and that was uh, Rutledge. They were trying to get that ball to. Now they're looking at a third and five situation from the 30 yard line. Third down was not Defiance's friend in the first half. They were two of seven. Now they're three of 11 for the game. So they're one of four here in the second half. 4.49 to go. It's a third and long. They try to set up the screen to get it to Dixon. He cuts back against the grain, tries to move forward. He'll get to the 26 yard line. He'll be about a yard shy of the first down marker. Not bad for a guy that's listed on the depth chart as a cornerback. No, he has done a, <laughs> he a has very done good a job. Really good job with the football. Uh, maybe came into the year as a cornerback, but impressed with his hands, so they figured, hey, you know, we might switch over to the other and side of the ball. And he wasn't slated as the starter. No, he was not, but he's been their most effective offensive weapon. He's got a quick, explosive first step and can really get up the field. On fourth and two, the pass goes incomplete. And it'll be BW taking over on downs once again with 4.07 remaining in quarter number three as BW leads it 28 to nothing. Well, tonight's Yellow Jacket game is brought to you by the Ohio Education Credit Union. Gain the advantage. The Ohio Education Credit Union offers convenience, trust, and value. Build your future for today. And by Medical Mutual of Ohio. Medical Mutual is a health care provider of Baldwin Wallace University. Adam Mendoza along with Matt Florjancic here from Trestle Field on the campus of Baldwin Wallace University in Berea, Ohio as the 2016 college football season underway as the Yellow Jackets lead at 28 to nothing with 4.07 remaining in the third quarter of play. Plagans, the quarterback, will have the pistol formation. They get it to Austin Smith. Smith gets wrapped up on the play. And coming in to make the stop is Jalen Neely, the strong side linebacker for Defiance. Yeah, he really did a good job with pursuit of the football, but also wrapping up the ball carrier. Smith has proven to be a, a bit of a pain to tackle, uh, especially in the short yardage areas. But uh, that was a good, solid wrap and drop by Neely. That is the 22nd carry for Smith in the ball game, 73 yards, but he also has three touchdown, three touchdowns, his longest from 10 yards out. Plagans looking to throw, looking for a comeback route, has a receiver open up in the middle. It's a wounded duck, and it's going to be caught by the Yellow Jackets as it's going to be going down all Glover the way. Again. Glover once again down to the 15-yard line. He did a good job to not only catch that football, Adam, but to rip out of an arm tackle attempt and gain an extra 10 yards on the play. 
It was not the prettiest of passes going into the wind with a little a bit of a slick ball because of the rain, but you can take it off the board because there is a flag in the backfield and the Yellow Jackets are heading the wrong way on the field. Well, DeJuan Glover out of Detroit, Michigan as the ball now will be moved way back after that big, big pickup by Glover, who's had a couple of big plays. This one just gets erased. That could have put him close to 100 yards receiving on the game, but negate it, and that's unfortunate for the Yellow Jackets because that was, uh, despite a little bit of a shaky ball out of Plagan's hands, that was a nice-looking play. And Glover, a freshman. You're going to have some big things. He's, he's got a lot of speed. I think some defensive backs in the OAC are going to have to watch this young man. He's a freshman, and Leverett is only a sophomore, and you've got plenty of speed between those two guys. Plagans flushed out of the pocket, fires a pass on a good catch. It is made by the Steinwalks. Yellow Jackets. Steinwalks hit coming up with his second catch on a little comeback route, comes back for the ball, cradles it in, and he picks up the yardage. Uh, we'll call it probably about a good 10 to 12, maybe 15 yards on the play. They'll spot it at the 35-yard line, and it will be third and two. I'm not going to label Steinwalks a, a possession receiver, but, man, is he a quarterback's best friend going over the middle when you need five, six yards. And he will do it. He will take the hits, come up with the catch, and go in traffic. 2.20 remaining. BW up 28 to nothing over Defiance. Plagans will put one in motion to the near side. That is Smith. Little half roll out to the near side. He was looking for Austin Smith. Coverage there being made by Markel Moncrief. Some of the folks from the BW side wanting a, a penalty before that play as he just covered him like a cheap suit. Yeah, they had a bit of a beef there. Uh, the line judge is currently getting an earful from John Snell, and I think it's pretty well deserved. Uh, that was a little bit too early on of an arrival from a defensive back on Austin Smith. Well, the rain has subsided right now, maybe just a passing uh, shower, and I think the meteorologists were saying we're going to see a little bit more of that this evening. And what is a very comfortable, cool, sleeping weather type of night, which we need because we've had some a uh, high number of 90 degree days in Northeast Ohio as the Yellow Jackets of BW punting the football away. Ball will take a bounce, take a roll, and will be downed at the 32 yard line. No, the 27, Adam. Oh, the 27, sorry. So again, Defiance is dealing with a long field. They're gonna have to go 73 yards to hit Pater for the first time on the season. And uh, they did a good job of moving the ball uh, early in that last drive, but the Yellow Jacket defense did a, uh, did a better job on fourth down to come up with a couple of pass breakups toward the end of that drive that really uh, created the turnover on downs. 28 to nothing, BW up on Defiance. Defiance with the football first and 10 at their own 26 yard line. Logan Scott looking to make something happen on the offensive side. The pass is caught by Cody Wilson. They'll give him forward progress to the 29-yard line. He'll pick up, uh, we'll call it two, second down and eight. Yeah, it's a, it's a generous two. Uh, that was a tough, tough catch to make, and he did it in traffic. But, again, BW doing a good job to swarm and not give up yards after the catch. Scott trying to get out of the grasp of one, but he couldn't get out of the grasp of a second BW defender as he goes down for a loss back at the 15-yard line. Yeah, Chris Murphy, the defensive tackle, defensive end for this Yellow Jacket team, had the first crack at him. I'm not exactly sure how Scott played Houdini and got out of that, but Richardson, uh, the big man, the six foot two, 230-pound junior out of Chicago, uh, continued his pursuit and brought down the quarterback for a huge loss and now it's a third and 21 for Defiance with 55 seconds to go here in quarter number three. So now Scott looking to throw on third down and long gets the ball away wisely. He still took a big hit and he's slow to get up but Scott did a good job to uh, avoid another turnover and really uh, kind of bail out the punter and not put him in an even worse position by getting tackled behind the line of scrimmage. Well, the Defiance Yellow Jackets struggling in this second half of action with only 152 yards in total offense. So they're at about maybe no more than 20 yards or so after the first half of action getting into the second half in this third quarter. Yeah, and 
really a lot of the yardage that they have gained in the second half is because of two pass interference penalties on the Yellow Jackets. Seven penalties for Defiance for 67 yards, eight penalties for BW for 66 yards. Typical and first, I would say that's typical first night jitters for both teams. A lot of procedural work uh, needing to be done over these next two weeks before uh, these two teams start to get toward or into, in the Baldwin Wallace's case, uh, conference play. Wolfington is back to receive the punt. He's standing at his own 49 yard line. And for Defiance, Jared Wright standing in the end zone about a half yard in. 30, or they'll make it 45 seconds remaining in quarter number three. Defiance finding themselves down 28 to nothing. Ball kicked away. Wolfington will get it at the 46, 47 yard line. Breaks a tackle, sidesteps one, spins back at the 45. We've got a flag thrown, and that flag was thrown for about 20 yards as the play gets stopped at the Defiance 46 yard line. BW will take over after the punt. I'm surprised we didn't see a flag on the near side at him because it looked like there was a, a block that it could be. It was very questionable whether it could be a block in the back or not, but there was uh, something of an infraction on the far sideline, and we will see what the referee has to say. Block in the back to BW, so that'll push him back. Plagans and company coming out. On offense. So instead of starting on the other side of the 50 yard line, the Yellow Jackets will be, the Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets will be starting at roughly their own 42 yard line here. Probably going to be the last play of the third quarter coming up if it's on the ground. Uh, we'll see what the Yellow Jackets. Uh, have in store for Defiance. Bucky Hendershot is the new running back for the BW Yellow Jackets. That's a great name, Bucky Hendershot. That's a great football That's name. That's an old school football name yes. right there. Hendershot will be to the left off the hip of Plagans. He'll get the handoff, trying to fight his way close to the 44-yard line. It'll be a pickup of two on the play, as that should be maybe run out the clock for the third quarter as BW with a 28 to nothing lead. It'll be interesting to see just how long the rest of the first team offense stays in. I would think this is probably going to be their last drive of the night, especially if they punctuate it with a touchdown. Charles Ellis will be the tight end on the near side of the field, also out there on the field, and that's going to be it for the third quarter play as we head to the fourth quarter. BW leads it over Defiance, 28 to nothing. Tonight's Yellow Jacket football game is brought to you by Medical Mutual of Ohio. Medical Mutual is a health care provider of Baldwin Wallace University. Also by Cleveland Clinic Sports Health Division, the health care provider for BW Athletics. And by Parkway Auto Care in Berea, Strongsville Express Tire and Auto Service in Montville. We serve the southwestern suburbs of Greater Cleveland. Today's game is also being brought to you by American International. When you require a company with proven performance, rely on American International. The Comfort Inn in Middleburg Heights, where your comfort is just a part of the service we provide our guests. The Courtyard by Marriott and Town Place Suites in Middleburg Heights. Have you stayed at a Marriott today? Integrity Berea. When you are looking for a place to call home, choose Integrity Berea. Visit us today at MyBereaApartment.com. Valley Ford Truck, when you need a big job done, call Valley Ford Truck. We carry the load for BW. And Crown Pla Plaza Suites in Middleburg Heights, when you are looking for a quality place to stay before any Yellow Jacket contest, please choose Crown Plaza Suites in Middleburg Heights. Adam Mendoza along with Matt Florjancic here from Trestle Field as the Yellow Jackets with the football. They'll be going left to right. Plagans on a half rollout to the far side, looking for a receiver. Fires looking. The pass is intercepted for the third time by Defiance's secondary. That's been the only bugaboo for Plagans as he's thrown three interceptions in this game tonight. Luckily, they have a 28 to nothing lead. Markel Moncrief with the interception for Defiance, and what a play it was. He went up in traffic and did a good job to put himself between the ball and his 
a man that he was defending, and he corralled it and held on to it. That's his second of the game. So with 14.51, the first play of the fourth quarter, and another turnover by Plagans, he's going to have to really – uh, get those interceptions down as you heard this, the, the tapping of the table next to us as the BW coach is not happy with that third interception being thrown by Plagans and then quickly on the run for defiance they'll get the ball to the 35 yard line it'll be a quick pickup of four yards on the play we'll see what kind of tempo uh, that defiance comes out with here in this in this fourth quarter to see if they can try to cut into the lead we have a yellow jacket that is slow to get up and it looks like he's clutching at his left leg. It's one of the big guys up front. And uh, maybe just a cramp. It is issue. just a cramp in the calf, and those are painful. The, the Make yes. no mistake about it. Those are you could hydrate all you want. You could eat all the bananas you want. When you get hit by one of those things, man, it feels like your legs on fire. Yeah, absolutely. And then it's going to be sore for the next day or so because that muscle just tightens up, and uh, you're going to get that early on in the season. You know. These teams have had the opportunity to work out in the heat, but once you get into that game situation and you're constantly putting that force on the body and expending a lot of energy, you may have hydrated yourself enough, but nothing's going to stop that calf cramp. Not at all, and those those are painful. Like you say, you are sore for a day or two after that. But the good thing is for BW, they have two-plus two weeks to get ready for their next game. Second down and seven for Defiance as Logan Scott looks, fires the pass, goes incomplete as that pass was intended for Cody Wilson. Yeah, it was a, a short route. It looked like a comeback route by Wilson on the left side of the formation, and Scott kind of grounded it right in front of him. There was no chance Wilson had at catching that football. Scott, 16 of 31 in the ball game, 107 yards passing. Third down and seven for Defiance. Three by one split as they will have Dixon in the backfield. Scott, heavy rush from the outside, flushed out of the pocket to the near side, looks, fires the pass. Intended, we're going to call that intended pass to number 30. Devontae that is Devontae Craven. Craven, but he turned around but never saw the football. Yeah, because it was already over his head and there was no way he was going to catch it. Uh, one of the shorter running backs for this Defiance team. He would have need, needed to have been about a foot and a half taller to try and catch that pass. But uh, that's that's Scott being at least aware of his situation and, and putting it away from the defender. No need to uh, try and test it and potentially have another turnover. So it brings up a fourth down and seven as the Yellow Jackets will send two deep to receive the punt at their own 35-yard line. The kick, a high, high kick. Fair catch is called, and the catch is made by Wolfington once again as the Yellow Jackets will get control of the football. I think he learned a lesson from trying to catch a knuckleball on the last punt. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> uh, very difficult ball coming off the foot of White. Uh, it does a little bit of a spin. It has zero rotation on it. Uh, it doesn't get a whole lot of distance, gets a little bit of hang time, and on that one, Wolfington did a good job to just say, hey, discretion being the better part of Valor, I'll just catch it and set my team up at the 39. Plagans will come out once again. He has thrown three interceptions in the ball game, and the tight end this time will be uh, Dewan Glover. Or he'll be the wide out to the left. Watch that speedy kid. Austin Smith in the backfield. Glover going in motion, jet sweep, a little... Uh, shovel pass to him to the 40 and he gets wrapped up at the 40 yard line good tackle being made on the defensive side by Markel Moncrief boy we've called his name a number of times not only for tackles but for two interceptions in the ball game yeah he's a special young man this guy could really play in the secondary and he's done a really good job for being on the field as much as defiance as defense has he continues to make plays deep into this ball game He's somebody to watch. He's a really good ball player. A pickup of two on the play. It'll be second down and eight at the BW 41-yard line. Plagans getting the shotgun snap, gives it to Austin Smith. He'll bounce to the outside at the 45, the 50, has a first down, down the sideline to the Defiance 40-yard line. But they're going to say he got out of bounds at about the 41-yard line on a big pickup as he picks up 18 yards on the run. Yeah, that was a nice-looking play to go end around on the left side. 
Uh, he had a whole lot of green, even though it was uh, closing fast on him. And, and Smith did a great, great job to read all the blocks that he had uh, to use them efficiently and effectively and get down the field. First down and 10 for the BW Yellow Jackets at the Defiance 41. Off the left hip of Plagans out of that pistol formation. Drops the football, but he snags it and brings it back in at the 45. A loss of four on the play. Bit of a milestone watch to watch out for here. Austin Smith is nine yards away from going over the century mark in rushing yards tonight. That complements his three touchdowns that he's had on 23 carries. He's averaging four yards per pop. Nice way to start the season if you're Austin Smith. And Coach Snell is going to really look to Austin Smith to run the football against some of the toughest defenses in the country, and they reside in the Ohio Athletic Conference. Smith will get the football, tries to spin his way back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, and coming in is Dan Delaro to, for defiance. Yeah, good job by Smith to get back to the line of scrimmage. He really didn't have much to deal with up front. Uh, the guys kind of got blown backwards off the ball, and Defiance really uh, snuffed it out and made it very, very difficult to get even a no game. So it brings up third down and a long 14 once again for the Yellow Jackets of Baldwin Wallace. On third down, they are six of nine. Smith now from the slot goes into the backfield. Three receivers to the far left side. Plagans, three-step drop, looks up to the middle. Heavy rush. He is going to go down for a sack. And coming in is Dalen Brown, the sophomore cornerback for Defiance. He, Plagans has to have a better internal clock that tells him once you get to the count of three, you better start looking to get rid of the football. Uh, he held the ball way, way, way too long on that play, and Defiance did a good job to collapse the pocket and gave him no time uh, to move. Once he made that initial first step up in the pocket, he didn't have a chance to uh, make a second move. BW with 14 points in the second quarter, 14 points in the third quarter, 28 to nothing lead, but they have turned the ball over a number of times as this ball will bounce inside the 10. It'll roll to the 5. And it will be downed at the four-yard line on a very good kick by Austin Smith, Mr. Everything. He can run the football, he can catch the football out of the backfield, and he could also punt the football. 49 yards on the punt right there. That was a great bit of kicking. And he had a little bit of a heavy rush off the ends, the two gunners uh, for Defiance. They really kind of pinched in on him and made that punt very difficult, but he... He kicked it right into where he needed to and got it to roll down at the four. Last year, seven inside the 20-yard line. So he's got one for this for, season. Not bad for a running back. No, <laughs> not bad at all. That is a, a typical athlete, the one that can punt, pass, and kick. <laughs> we should ask him if he's ever did that I'm as sure, a kid. I'm sure he <laughs> has. We've got a flag thrown before the play gets underway. False start on defiance. And that is the call, so that'll be pushed back uh, a few yards as they have the ball at their own four-yard line, so half the distance most likely, and they'll put it at about the two. 10.35 remaining in the fourth quarter of play. BW in control, 28 to nothing, but it hasn't been a pretty game for the Yellow Jackets. No, not, not on either side of the football. Um, BW defensively is playing a little bit better than the offense is. The offense is committed uh, three turnovers and just not look sound or in rhythm very often. Uh, Ball popped away on the run, and BW will pick it up on the fumble at the 11-yard line as I believe that was running the football. Lamar Dixon lost the handle of the football, and BW is going to sit pretty inside the red zone at the 11-yard line. Yeah, credit Jake Carner with the recovery. The ball kind of skidded across the turf here at Trestle Field and right into his arms and being the wise uh, secondary member that he is instead of trying to pick it up and scoop it on a wet soggy night he decided to fall on it and take possession of the ball at just outside the 10 yard line Baldwin Wallace with a first and 10 from Defiance's 11 yard line. Jay Hudson now comes in to be the quarterback the sophomore out of East Lake Florida and East Lake High School. He'll await the shotgun snap 
as Smith goes in motion. He will keep the football and gets knocked for a loss of three yards on the play. Make it four yards as they are, they're going to call it three at the 14. Just really nowhere to go for Hudson. I mean, he tried the inside fake on the uh, on the read option, and it, it, by the time he pulled the ball back, he had three defenders staring him in the face. There's not much he can do in that kind of situation. Ten minutes remaining in quarter number four. The Yellow Jackets in control, 28 to nothing here in this game as BW with 269 yards in total offense to 152 for Defiance. Smith getting the handoff. No, it is the quarterback keeping it. Hudson's going to go in from 15 yards out as Hudson gets his first touchdown for BW on the year on a quarterback keeper. That quarterback read, the read option, really jet sweep read option. Not a bad play at all by the sophomore quarterback to fake it and even really kind of faked us out because we thought the running back had the ball too. Pulled it down, and then at about the five, he did a nice little swim move around a defender, a little stutter step and a leaping swim move to, that sprung him into the end zone. Simonis' kick is up, and it is good. And it is a 35 to nothing lead for BW here in the fourth quarter with 9.45 to go as Hudson puts it over the end zone, and BW in control right now, 35 to nothing as they get some points here in quarter number four. You know, you, we were talking earlier about how it wasn't the prettiest game for Baldwin Wallace, but defensively, uh, I think they've really done a good job to carry this team. You can't argue with the fact that they forced a couple turnovers, turned them into points on the other side of the field. Uh, defensively, they've been causing havoc in the backfield. They've been tough to run against, and when they give up catches, they don't give up yards after the catch against this Defiance team. Sands the two pass interference penalties. They've really played a pretty clean ball game defensively. Well, they've given up just 152 yards on 53 plays. That's just under three yards a play. But as you said, a couple of those penalties, really the only bad things. But offensively for the Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets, they've moved the ball well, but the turnovers have really hurt them. Yeah, they, they could be up by a lot more right now had they not turned the ball over. And that's something that over these next 16 days before they go to John Carroll to play for the Cuyahoga Gold Bowl trophy, uh, they're going to want to clean up those turnovers because if you have three interceptions against the likes of John Carroll, Mountain Union, and Ohio Northern, you're going to be in a world of hurt. And when you talk about those teams that you mentioned, that's the upper three in the Ohio Athletic Conference. Mount Union, your defending national champion, long time. I, you, know, you lose track of how many times they've won an OAC title. Then John Carroll and Ohio Northern. Ohio Northern really coming back with a lot of weapons this year once again. Yeah, they, Ohio Northern has really done a good job on the northwest side of the state uh, to recruit and to get in athletes that can be playmakers for them. And, uh, you know, you look at the likes of Mount Union, their resume speaks for itself. Their recruiting pitch is just, hey, take them into the gym, walk them across the, the trophy case and go, this is what you play for every year. And John Carroll's built a nice little dynasty under Tom Arth out on the east side of town. And uh, those are all teams that Baldwin Wallace has to contend with. Those are all teams that are picked above them. And if you want to compete, you're going to have to play a clean ball game. And they did not, they have not played a clean ball game, but they do lead it 35 to nothing after that incompleted pass as Logan Smith's pass is caught and uh, probably about a five, six yard gain as Devontae Craven once again coming up with a reception. Yeah, a nice little play right there by Craven to, to get upfield and get an extra two to three yards on that play after catching the ball. Logan yep. Scott, 17 of 31 for 115 yards. On second down and three, the pass is caught. Jason Santora, the freshman, coming up with a catch for the first down. He'll pick up three yards to the 30, and it's a first down. One of the few times that we can actually say that Defiance has a first down, they're 12th of the ball game. They're so infrequent that they have just as many as BW. Yeah. And on the run, once again, is Lamar Dixon, who was not slated as the starting running back tonight, but 
he may have earned his job as that running back. I absolutely agree with that statement. Uh, there's no question that he's going to be uh, in a different spot when they adjust their depth chart for their next game. Logan Scott looking to throw the pass is incomplete. Once again, they tried to get that pass off to Craven, and he has had some opportunities of catching the football. It's right there, but he's just not able to get the complete grasp of the football. Yeah, he's not having a very good night at all trying to get a hold of this ball. Uh, he's struggled whether it's hit him in the chest, in the hands, uh, and if you're the quarterback, you, you have to be shaking your head going, I don't know where to throw it to you because I've hit you in the chest, I've hit you in the hands, and you still can't catch it. But the credit defiance, they haven't lost faith in him. They continue to go after him, try and build his confidence. 8.22 remaining, 35 to nothing. BW with the lead on third down and two at the 38. The handoff is to Dixon. Nothing going right there as Sharkham Bonaparte coming in to make the stop. Three yard loss on the play. They'll drop him back close to the 35 yard line. As the clock continues to roll, with, or now they'll stop the clock with 8.06 remaining in quarter number four. And BW will send out their punting unit. That will be Wolfington once again. Back to receive the kick along with Trip Washington. Jared Wright standing back at his 20-yard line. Got a lot of speed and a lot of playmaking ability drop back to return for this Yellow Jacket team. We've seen Wolfington take one uh, a long way down the field, and we know Washington has all the speed and athletic ability in the world to make something happen. And the ball's going to be downed at the 50-yard line. I don't know if the referee saw it because it was such a low kick by... It hit one of the linemen in the back. You know, like you said, it was so low that it actually hit one of Defiance's players, and, and truthfully, Defiance is going to get a little bit of love here because yeah. it hit at midfield, and they're going to spot it roughly the 48-yard line. Uh, just a not a good punt coming off of White's foot right there. He's been struggling all night uh, to get really good hang time and distance on the ball, and that was just uh, obviously he did not hit it right. He mishit it, and it hit one of his linemen in the back, and BW will get good field position here with uh, half of fourth quarter to play. And I was going to say that he was averaging 40 yards a carry or on a kick. There's the run being made by BW. Dewan Glover once again, the speedy wide receiver on that jet sweep, will pick up eight yards on the play. This young man is fun to watch when he gets in space because he makes a lot of people miss with his, his uh, just movement ability, and he's just a good athlete that can play. He uses his speed well, but he's very technically sound. He's got good vision when he gets the ball in his hands. He sees holes, and he creates them. Uh, by using his change of pace, that's a good young player that John Snell can mold over the next few years to really hone in and be one of the special players in this conference. Glover is a receiver on the near side of the field as Hudson, the quarterback, gives it to his back, and they'll pick up the first down. They needed two. They picked up three on the play. Tender shot was the ball carrier on the play, and he just kind of bowled up through the defensive tackles and push the pile forward enough to move the chains. First and 10 for Baldwin Wallace from the Defiance 41 yard line with 620 and counting the go here in the ball game. In that backfield, Hender shot to the right of the quarterback, Jake Hudson, who scored his first touchdown. Now Hender, Hender shot out of the backfield. Actually, that's Plagans back in. Plagans will get out of bounds, pushed out of bounds late, and that's going to be a personal foul against Defiance at the 36-yard line. So BW will pick up some big yardage after the play on the personal foul against Defiance, so they'll tack on another 15 yards on the play. Yeah, that's just not a good play right there by the Defiance defender. Uh, you, anytime you get near a quarterback when you're out of bounds, you have to check up, and he didn't. He just continued to go forward and gave him just the most uh, minute bump, if you will. It wasn't even really a, a good, like, two-handed shove, and that's enough to tack on 15 extra yards. Just undisciplined play right there. 
Hendershot in the pistol formation in the backfield. Myers is your tight end to the left. Two receivers, including Glover, on the near side. They give it to Hendershot. He'll bounce off one, bounce off two, inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. He'll pick up three yards on the play. 5.33 remaining here in quarter number four, and BW in control, 35 to nothing. They're looking to increase that advantage, but they are going to chew up a good chunk of this clock right here. They're keeping it on the ground up by five scores. There's no need to put it in the air right now. Baldwin Wallace is just going to try and keep things on the ground as long as possible. 300 yards in total offense for the Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets. They've rushed the ball for 110 yards to 52 for Defiance. Second down and seven. Half rollout. Plagans throws. Good defensive play being made. Markel Moncrief. Well, that was the old broadcaster's jinx right there. I talk about how they're going to run the ball to keep the clock winding, and what do they do? They call a pass play. Uh, you know, it's a nice opportunity to catch the defense off guard, but if I'm seeing Moncrief anywhere near the football, I'm throwing the other way. That kid has been a thorn in Baldwin Wallace's side all night long. He's making play after play on the ball, whether it's running up in uh, in space to make a tackle or whether it's just flat out creating turnovers. He's created two interceptions, broken up a couple more passes. This guy is a legit defensive back here in, in Division Three, And he's only been credited with five tackles in the ballgame, but he also has two interceptions and a number of knockdowns. Third down and seven for Plagans and company as they give it to Hendershot. He barrels his way, or actually that was Plagans keeping the football, and he gets over the 15 to the 14-yard line. It'll be a pickup of four yards on the play. He's very good at putting that ball in the belly of his running back and then keeping it himself at the last moment to run it for a few yards. Yeah, he's very deceptive with it, and it's, it's very difficult to see from up here whether he actually gives the ball away or not. So I can just imagine that those defensive guys for Defiance are really struggling to see whether or not he has possession of the football. Brings up a fourth down and two for BW in this game. First time they're attempting fourth and for the first down, and they are going to get it as they got it to the 10-yard line. A pickup of four on the play. First down, move the chains. First and goal to go inside the 10 as the BW Yellow Jackets in the red zone. Clock winding down. Under 340 remaining here in the contest as BW up 35 to nothing. 2016 kickoff of the college football season. Division three in Northeast Ohio. Plagans on the handoff, Hendershot. Bounces his way for a touchdown from 11 yards out. Nice looking play right there by Hendershot. He turned the corner and was gone to daylight. You could tell that, you know, he might have been a little frustrated having to take that hit on the great sweep by Plagans just a couple plays earlier when he got a chance to actually run the football. You saw him run with some aggressiveness and some anger, and that's what pushed him across the line. Bucky Hendershot with his first touchdown of the season. Simonis getting ready for the extra point out of the hold of Jake Carner. Can the snap, the set, the kick is away. It's good. We've got a late flag, and it could go against Defiance. More of a frustration flag as the score goes up to 42 to nothing here late in the ball game. Yeah, we've seen a lot of uh, temper starting to boil over for both teams, and really uh, – there's a couple of guys on the Baldwin Wallace line that are are hanging in there and hanging tough, but uh, they're starting to push back a little bit and uh, get a little upset with some of the liberties that they think defenders are taking. DeWan Bridges, offensive guard, has been one that's been in on a few scrums, and uh, it's it's one of those situations where Defiance's coach is pretty much screaming at the official saying, how come we're getting flagged when they're responding to the contact as well and it's it's a very difficult situation right now for these officials because they're trying to keep the game in check there's not very much time left on the clock it is a blowout victory for Baldwin Wallace and Defiance is you know obviously frustrated but the uh, 
the Defiance coaches are, are starting to get a little bit upset with the lack of calls going their way. This is why I like in high school football, you get that 30-point plus Running lead. clock. You got that running clock. You didn't have that last week, though. You're, no, you're no, no, saying, no. Your St. Edward Eagles were in until the end. They were yeah. in a fight. Absolutely. For, for many of the folks that uh, know me, I, I am the play-by-play -play voice for St. Ed's, and they had a tough season opener on national TV against Pine Richland out of Gibsonia, Pennsylvania. And uh, they won it 28 to 27. And it doesn't get any easier for them as they take on Archbishop Hoban tomorrow night in Akron. Yeah, that's a fun way to start the season. But, but you know, honestly, when you look at St. Edward's schedule, uh, if you can find an easy game on it, I think you probably put it up against a dartboard and just chuck the <laughs> dart at it because there's no way you can pick a game that's going to be easy for the Eagles. They purposely schedule for the postseason they toughen up the regular season to get themselves in position to be the best in the state and they are the two-time defending state champions and a couple of kids uh, have come to Baldwin Wallace Mike Carbon is on the roster here for BW and and I think coach John Snell is really going to try to look at St. Ed St. Ignatius and some of these top tier division one teams to try to get that talent to come to BW in the future. And he had luck with it when he first took over the program. He was able to go into the mentors of the world and get some of the talent that they had. Uh, and Coach Bob Packard, uh, you know, uh, rest his soul. He was very good at getting those big school guys as well. Uh, dropped off a little bit. You've gone to the second tier schools because a lot of those schools play on a regional basis, so they get more exposure to recruiting and they – they get to choose different schools, but Coach Snell has really done a good job to try and get the, the numbers back up from those schools. Corey Bennett uh, does not get much. When you look at that St. Ed's to, to BW pipeline, one player you got to look at is Anthony Gardner. Yeah, Anthony Gardner was an excellent talent for this team. Uh, started his career elsewhere, but transferred into Baldwin Wallace and really had a, a pretty good run for BW uh, as their quarterback. Uh, a tremendous athlete and a guy who kind of like you said help start the trend of guys playing at St. Edward and maybe St. Ignatius as well starting to look to play at the Baldwin Wallaces of the world. So with 233 to go they will have Logan Scott as the quarterback under Senate with an I formation so I think uh, the coaching staff for Defiance is just going to run the football. Casey Goff is just going to say let's run the football keep it in the in the field of play and just let that clock run. Uh, as it will be a third down play for Defiance. You know, really, you can look at the scoreboard, and it's, yeah, obviously it's 42 to nothing as the Reigns pick up here at Trestle Field. And if you're Defiance, you can say it wasn't the prettiest of games, but really they did play a very good first half of football. And outside of some discipline uh, plays that they need to improve on, you know, they were right with a very good Baldwin-Wallace team on their home field uh, with hardly any crowd support at all. So there are some building blocks, if you're Defiance, to move forward with. And for Baldwin-Wallace, I, I think this is the kind of game that, uh, although John Snow you know, obviously would have wanted a, a, a good performance and he's gotten one, there are some things to build on. And I think deep down inside, coaches like that. Coaches like having something to work on. When it's too perfect and things are going too well, coaches get a little bit uptight. With 110 remaining, I did not bring my umbrella, and I've got to walk across the street to my car as the rains continue to really fall. This is another line of those the, the, the rains that are coming out of the north. Yeah, it's uh, I mean, it's pretty steady when you look in the lights. Like I said, it looks like it's snowing, and that's... Shh, we don't want to say that that's, word. I know. <laughs> it's only September. We've got a couple months. And the BW Yellow Jackets trying to return the punt from the 45 to the 46, and on the return for that punt was Ty Gallo. He'll pick up a yard as the rain continues to fall pretty heavy here. Yeah, it's, it's coming down thick right now, but... Uh, you know, it's toward the end of the game, so you would expect that BW would probably just kneel on it twice and take the 42 to nothing win uh, over Defiance. And no need to really try and push it any further. So BW will start the season 1-0. and We'll have a week off next week, and uh, they'll get back in action. Two weeks from Saturday night, they will play at... Uh, Don Shula Stadium against the John Carroll University Blue Streaks, their next home game 
will be on September 24th, the Saturday. Uh, it will be a night game. It's community night here in Berea. Always a big crowd comes out to support the Baldwin-Wallace Yellow Jackets, and they will be playing the uh, Mount Union Purple Raiders. So the Yellow Jackets with 326 yards in total offense go in victory formation. This will be the final play of the ball game, and that should about do it as both teams starting to head towards the center of the field as BW comes up with the big win, 42 to nothing. They put up 326 yards in total offense to 183 for Defiance. Robbie Plagans, 12 of 21 for 191 yards, one touchdown pass. Unfortunately, he had three interceptions. Austin Smith, 24 carries, 91 yards, three touchdowns. Hendershot, six carries, 26 yards with a touchdown. Jay Hudson, two carries, 11 yards, one of them a touchdown. Steinwachs, two catches for 51 yards for BW. Wagoner, three catches for 47. Wolf, two for 44. Dewan Glover, three for 44. For the Defiance Yellow Jackets, on the offensive side, Logan Scott was 18 of 36 for 119 yards. Lamar Dixon, 11 carries, 49 yards. He's going to be the guy that's going to be running the football, I think, for this defiance squad throughout the rest of the year. And then on the defensive side, Markel Moncrief with two big interceptions against Plagans tonight. And he's another guy that you're going to have to watch on the defensive side of the football w for Defiance. Without question. They, like I said, there are some bright spots. I know the scoreboard doesn't say it when you lose 42 to nothing. But this game was a lot closer than it looked until those last two touchdowns. You know, this is a team that really gave BW some fits tonight. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how the rest of the season plays out for Defiance to see if they're able to learn from this game and for the flip side of it to see if BW can improve on their shortcomings and get themselves in a position to uh, contend for the OAC title. Well, the Yellow Jackets come up with the win 42 to nothing as the 39th annual Lee Trestle Shrine Classic comes to a close with BW with the win 42 to nothing over Defiance College. Markel Moncrief given the defensive player honors with his two interceptions. No and why, surprise why at not? all. Yeah, absolutely. That young man deserved it. He had a whale of a ball game. Just a good, uh, a good effort defensively for Moncrief. Uh, I know it doesn't feel like it when you lose 42 to nothing, but that's a good young ball player. Yeah, he is going to be a tough one for the Defiance squad. And no surprise here. Austin Smith gets it for Baldwin Wallace. 91 yards rushing and three touchdowns, the first three touchdowns of the season for the Yellow Jackets. So the Yellow Jackets of Baldwin Wallace come up with a 42 to nothing win over Defiance as the rain really starting to fall here at Trestle Field. But the Yellow Jackets come up smiling as they win it 42 to nothing. For my partner, Matt Florjancic, I'm Adam Mendoza. We want to thank you for joining us as BW defeats Defiance 42 to nothing. Have a good night, everybody, and thank you for joining us.